but things change. A lot of these processes that you guys are seeing that are out now, they're old from Patrick Devine. You know, Patrick Devine's dead. <laughs> he got a hold of that person to put a count, and he did, period. Um, a lot of these processes are old. For you guys that's on here that here are the W4 sandwich, I can contest with proof. The W4 sandwich used the word. Took you about two weeks to get a paycheck. But now that everybody's doing it, it's like now they're saying you're doing frivolous violence. There is a video on YouTube of the elite talking. And one thing that they said stuck out to me. And it said that if somebody just so happened to figure out our system, we have enough in our arsenal to combat it. That's what they're doing. If you're on this live and you have signed up as a state national, if you know like I know, you will go resend that. If you signed up as an American state national under David Strait, under Anna Von Wrights, you might want to go resend that. They just put out about a month ago on the news where it said, that the CIA is saying there's a new target of individuals that is a threat to the United States. Well, if you guys actually read those documents that you filled out, you're raging war against the United States Corporation. Y'all can't beat them. And they're calling you guys terrorists. Now, as American national, we all are. But because of acquiescence, if you ain't never heard of that word, you might want to look it up. Because of acquiescence, because of the us being silent, because of us not standing up saying, hey, this is my nationality. Hey, this is my ethnicity. Because contrary to what you may believe, you have no nationality on the record. You have no ethnicity on the record. White is not a nationality. Black is not a, I'm sorry, ethnicity. Caucasian, none of these things are ethnicity and um, nationalities. And when you're looking at your ethnicity and your nationality, it's not based off of what you feel. It's not based off of Black law. Because a man wrote Black law. <laughs> it's based off of the definition that the government has placed. Please understand why you're in this process. Every entity has a different definition for their words. So when I'm dealing with court, I'm not using a banker's dictionary. When I'm dealing with the bank, I'm not using a court terminology. And that is where they got us at, guys. Language fraud. Language fraud, language fraud, language fraud. Which you'll actually find a 17 CFR. I don't mess with USC codes because it's nothing but a code to back up a law. If anything, I'll touch the CFR, which is coded in the Federal Register which means that the dear president, whoever that may have been at that time, actually signed off on it, which means you can actually use it and they have to stand on it and you can stand on it as a foundation, okay? Um, you keep hearing we need to correct our status. I just told you there's nothing there. What are you correcting? What you have to do is get it on the record. You don't even need an affidavit to do it. And I tell you, these people have literally wrote everything that we need the way that we need it. So what my purpose here today is, I'm going to tell you guys exactly what you want to know. I have been doing this long enough to know y'all don't care about no PowerPoint. Y'all don't care about no none of that. What y'all want to know is how you can get to the end result of the goal. And y'all can be honest. Put a thumbs up if I'm being honest because I've been doing it long enough to know. Um, hopefully y'all got some pen and paper ready. I'm going to get straight to the point. Um, like I said, my energy is not the best right now. I need for you guys to tighten up because we're running out of time. Um, I cannot post it on social media. If I do, I can consider my page gone for you guys who've been following me for a while. This is my fifth page. Evidently something on my page is right. The day after I did that live with Caleb and I got to talking about the bank. See, I can do it now because we're on Zoom. If y'all notice, they have been targeting my page ever since. They have been hitting all of my content. I have been getting it restored. The appeals won, but they keep pushing my data comment outwards. I can promise you on the 27th when they say it's time for me to comment again, I'm going to wake up and my page is going to be gone. Because contrary to what y'all believe, every answer is on my page. But because I'm not physically on there talking to you guys like we're in preschool, nobody pays attention to it. But all the answers is there. 
I promise you, I give it to you and I give you the law to back up whatever it is that I'm telling you guys. The first step that you have to do is get it on the record who you are. There is a series of forms to do that. We will go over those forms tonight. We will go over how those forms are supposed to be filled out. We will go over where those forms are supposed to be sent, how they're supposed to be put on the record on the public side and the private side. That is the only thing I'm going over. I've got messages you're going over trust. That's not what the paper said. It said what I was going over. Um, because you guys have to get back to the basics. Um, I do a, enough consultations with you, with a lot of people to know that you guys are getting these templates. You're getting these processes and these same people that are selling it to y'all ain't telling you that they've lost their house or their car has been repossessed or Capital One and Capital One good for it. If you don't hit Capital One right the first time, they're going to shut that car down. And I'm telling you that now. If you're sending a coupon with all those codes and stuff on it and you send it to the P.O. box, it's on my page. They do what's called lockbox funding. It's not even going to them. They're doing lockbox funding. So, of course, it's not going to get credited to the account because it's not going to the right person. You guys got to start fact checking the things that you guys are hearing over social media um, and make sure that they correct because ultimately only you can save you. I can't save you. Now I can help you get on the path, but I can't save you. Only you can save you. And it's not as hard as people have made it to be. Um, at one point, I thought it was even hard until I really got into their stuff and I started using their words against them. And that is key. I explained to somebody on the live last night they said something about Black Law's dictionary. So I want y'all to think about that term, Black Law. They knew we was gonna pick it up because we think we Black, number one. So, okay, they're gonna pick it up because it says Black Law. So if Black mean dead, why are you picking up a dead book? Think about it. If nothing is lawful, because there's a difference in lawful and legal, is that book really what you should be picking up? How many people have you heard try to write affidavits to get out of court case and every word they use from black law and they ended up still being charged in jail? It's a dead book. It's another one of those, we got enough in our arsenal <laughs> to combat what y'all trying to do. Period. So um, we'll get started. Hold on one second. Since I got to get my charger so I can, uh, my computer is about to die. Can you um, entertain them for like two seconds? Where he started? Like, Thank you. You are okay. Of course. To everyone that is here, I do want to say thank you. Um, I also want to apologize for the inconvenience of the password. Um, we really did try to get everybody to register beforehand so that we would have a smooth transition. But what matters most is that there is a good amount of people here. I do believe most of the people who signed up are actually in this live. So that's all we can really hope for. Um, to everyone who signed up and there over half of you over. I know I know for a fact, 75 percent of the people or I know I know for a fact, at least half of them signed up before yesterday. So to all of you, I appreciate you for doing your diligence to everyone else. I'm glad that you're here. Let this be a learning experience, okay? And the one thing that I really just want to address is please be mindful that we are people, right? I don't think any of you would like it if you were getting phone calls at 2 a.m. So we're not we're not gonna do that. That if, if you can understand that, you can understand why there's been a little bit of frustration. Um, but okay. in the future, What'd you say? It's okay. I'm changing my number. Yep. Um, in the future, just let's let's be mindful of that. If you if we say you're gonna get the links, you're gonna get the links. Okay. We've been very vocal this entire week leading up to the class about the process. So the fact that that many people felt that because they didn't follow directions, which is the key part, that was one big issue. Is there was a lot of not directions not being followed you you do not harass somebody on those terms if we were gen, gen, genuinely in the wrong i could understand but in this situation 
the instructions were laid out clear as day. Too many people did not have an issue that we know. And I know what happened. You paid for the class. You got the confirmation email. And you're like, okay, I'm good. 30 minutes before, you didn't get a password. Oh, no. What's going on? Let me go back through my email. Oh, maybe I was supposed to click this link. Oh, maybe now I should register. And then the system got overloaded. That's exactly what happened. We knew it was going to happen. But we're here now. We are here now. And that's all that matters. Absolutely. We can't be the dead horse. Um, I just hope that you guys, for future reference, if I decide to do something for future reference, um, that you are taking a little bit more seriously. We know that you guys got the emails because they, you guys started uh, registering all at the last minute. It, it literally, this system literally tells me what time you went to register. It tells me all of that. So all of you last minute people, um, yeah, thanks. So, and all of you early board people, thank the last minute people to why it took so long. And because I normally, I have to protect my intellectual property because people have tried to take it before. We had literally go in and manually hit all of everyone to be approved based off of making sure that the link was not given out. Um, and it got to a point that I just had to literally change the setting and do a manual approval for everybody, which I should not have had to do that if people just would have paid attention. Um, I was considering doing a full series for you guys um, with additional classes that you guys will need with the main one being um, recension and putting your bills in a do not pay, do not delete status. You know, um, y'all making it real hard for me. Y'all making it real hard. Please don't make it hard for me. I actually, please don't make it hard for me. Okay. Um, Like, I still got people inboxing me now because they didn't register. Y'all you know? hear this? Since you hear this? Look at this. <laughs> this won't stop. Her phone's constantly ringing because there's people that's supposed to be in here that didn't follow directions. <laughs> and, the, and the registration is open, so all they got to do is log in and it'll take them right to it. Yeah, there's been a few people who've joined. Um, so it's still working, even just recently. Yeah, but unfortunately, I'm about to lock the room up. So I don't know what to tell them. I have to catch the replay after I'm done with it. And I don't rush to do my replay. Sometimes I don't even put a replay out. So then I got to make sure they get what they got. So that's like putting me in a hard position. And then that's like setting a standard. You know, if you guys think that you can come in late and whatever, that lets me know how serious it is that you want to change, um, change your life. And change Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna get straight to the point with y'all. I know y'all don't care about no pie, y'all don't care about none of that. So let me tell y'all what y'all gotta do to get on the record properly. There's no affidavits that is gonna need even need to be involved. Okay. Every document in which it is that you need is already there. So we are gonna go over these documents, document by document, which you guys need to select and where they need to go. Because when I tell y'all we're running out of time, and I need at least the 212 people that's on this call to be able to at least get it so that there will be no confusion because I do understand guys, this stuff is a lot. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot, especially when you hear so many different people, you don't know which way to go. You know what I'm saying? Am I right? I mean, y'all can shake your head. I can see y'all. It's, it's so much. You like, well, where the hell? At? Look, I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna Detroit so I keep it straight real, okay? So, I know y'all like, where the hell are we supposed to start? We got this person saying we need to do this. We got that person saying we do need to do that. What are we really supposed to do? Why are we really authenticating our birth certificate? Does anybody know why you are authenticating your birth certificate and what it means? If you do, raise your hand on the little button thing is a way to raise your hand. And beautiful as will unmute you. I just want to know what is you guys' interpretation on why you are authenticating, because I want to get the record straight on this live today. Okay, so since pick a person and let's see what the consensus is so we can. Troy. 
Good afternoon. First and foremost, I want to say thank you. I appreciate you. I was one of the last people <laughs> late night to register, but I just found out about it and I was so super excited. However, the question, um, my my understanding of it is that what you're doing is you're it's a portion of claiming the minor estate because if you consider to be out at sea and you, just like with a house if a house goes if someone passes away and you never claim the deed to the house the house goes to the state so i noticed on my birth certificate i was born april 20th but it shows a May 1st registration. I believe that my mother did not claim the minor estate. So what I did was I got my birth certificate and then I had her write an affidavit of truth just saying that she did not mean to have me as a public birth, but it was a private birth. So that's my interpretation. And hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Tyrone. How you guys doing? Well, what I what I um, believe that it is is it's um, stating that the signatures that the uh, notaries are true notaries and they're um, and they're just stating that they are um, empowered to notarize your documents. How are you? Okay, Judas. Okay, right, just, go, just go to the next one. I'm just going to say, Lewis. Okay. Okay. Michael. Can you Hello. Hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, hey. Um, my thing is this in this um world of trust, I've just trying to put on put on record my status beneficiary so I can be able to guide the banks the way I want to do it. Just get access to my credits. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, guys. So keep going. Uh I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I muted myself, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, so thank you guys, everybody, for answering that question. As you guys will see, I'm big on foundation, so I ask questions. I'm not calling anybody out. I need to know what everybody is thinking, just in case it's not the correct thing because of so much misinformation that's out. Okay, I'm big on that. So the reason for authentication is because anybody can create a document. Y'all know, especially right now in the age of you can recreate anything, you can recreate a document. So in order for you to say that you're going to take over the duties as the beneficiary of the co-trustee, you have to make sure that the document that you're putting on record is an authentic document. That full faith and credit that they keep saying that you get, please understand that is only for the seals. That's it. It's for the seals. It is saying that those seals on that authentication has full faith and credit, okay? After you do the authentication on the federal level, you need to also do what's called the Minnesota 220 rule. You got to do the Minnesota 220 rule. Do anybody know what the Minnesota 220 rule is? The Minnesota 220 rule is Tanisha, what's your interpretation of what the Minnesota 220 rule is? Uh, Minnesota 220 rule is for us to put our um, age of majority on um, the record. And, and how are you doing that? Um, after you get your um, federal level, you're putting it on record. <laughs> and I should know this, and I was just looking at it the other day. You have to, if I'm not mistaken, you have to attach. Um, you have to file the Minnesota 220 rule in your state. And if I'm not mistaken, you have to attach an affidavit of ownership. I could be saying that backwards. Um, and then there, there's another step, but it's not coming to me right away. Okay. 
Thank you. I, did I get it at least halfway right? You got it. Yes, you did, man. You okay. did. And you know who you better have. <laughs> oh no, guys. Let me uh, uh this one I do this. I'm trying to share my screen and it won't click the button. This is not gonna happen to me today. Hold on, guys. Okay, well, I'm working on the share my screen button. For some reason, it's not doing it. So what, what the Minnesota 220 rule is, is exactly almost, you know, what she just said. You have to put on the record affidavit of ownership. You have to do that. It has to be attached when you go to record it. But when you are recording the Minnesota 220 rule, it needs to be recorded in the state that you were born in. That is where your estate started at. Okay. Now, we know for some of you guys that have been doing this for a while, it will, um, you may get to your recorder's office and they'll say, oh, I'm not going to record it. Well, an apostille is just as important as the authentication. Okay. And the authentication is for federal level. But how often are you dealing with the feds outside of when they're trying to tell us that we need to get jabs? or the fake IRS, because there is a difference in the Internal Revenue Service and the IRS, they're two different people, okay? Please know that. The Internal Revenue Service that is taken out of your check is a private corporation, which is why those are voluntary. So you're voluntarily giving your money away for no reason. Now the IRS Treasury, which is located in Ogden, Utah, is where our trust and the, um, the public debt is being paid through. So please know that there is a difference. If you look both of them up, you will even see that they have two different logos. It's all wordplay. Just like the United States Postal Service and the United States Postal Office are two different people. It's all wordplay. And they make it so close to check our minds that we don't realize it. So when you do this affidavit of ownership, you can Google an affidavit of ownership. And it is nothing but saying that you are the age of majority and that is how you get out of minor status that you we were supposed to do at the age of 18 and step in Mississippi and it's one other state where the age of majority is 21. So you have to get it on the record that do the age of majority affidavit of ownership. When the affidavit of ownership is completed and you get the notarization put on it, you need to go get that go to your clerk's office and have them certify. Catch the words I'm using. You need them to certify the notary signature on your Minnesota 220 rule document. Once your clerk certify the notary signature, then you're gonna go to your secretary of state or wherever in your state that does apostilles. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I got a couple of notaries on this line. If I am mistaken, some of the notaries can do apostilles. Um, where's she at? Hold on, she on here. My notary lady, put your hand up. And ask it, because I got a question. No, actually, I already said you online. Where's she go? That's okay, I'll type it in. I'll find. Here she go, here she go. Hey. Hello, darling. Maybe we got to unmute her. I, I just did. I unmuted. Okay. Unmute. You got to unmute for me. Hey, okay. darling, how are you? I'm fine. Good. I know everybody know this face right here. <laughs> Y'all didn't probably seen her on TikTok. So she is a notary. Oh, Can yeah. you um, verify for me that you guys, notaries, do have the ability to do apostilles? We have the uh, we have the ability. We don't actually do the apostilles, but we would take them down to the secretary of state or the county clerk's office to get the apostille certificate attached. Yes. Do you do you ever have any issues because you are a notary to get those documents with the apostille on it? Do they question you like they would do a normal person with those, or do they just let it go straight through? Um, no, I haven't had an issue and you're correct as far as the affidavit of ownership, um, that is validating that the notary, um, who has signed the affidavit of ownership that makes sure that 
our commission is still intact and it is valid and they verify our signature on there. So that has to get done before it's taken to the Secretary of State. And then um, you are able to get like the, the great seal put on the document. Perfect, thank you so much. So the key to making sure that your county recorder's office, guys, it is your county recorder's office that you are sending this to. Your courthouse is a private organization with a government contract. So for anybody who say, hey, I put it on the record at the court, you put it on the record with a private company. They are a private company with a government contract off of Salem.gov, like y'all see all over social media talking about getting a government contract, which is why all their buildings look the same. It'll make you appear that they are government, but they're private, okay? So to make sure that you don't get any issues with filing any of your documents anytime you have to file something, you want to get that notary signature certified from your clerk's office, and then you want to get the apostille put on there. Once the apostille is put on your documents, they cannot and will not deny you recording them. The difference between the authentication and apostille authentication is for federal level. But now we're dealing with the contracted states. And in order for a document to be viable in another contracted state, it need an apostille on there, not another authentication. Okay. Also, certain documents that you will file, you are going to have to put on the public record. Your city court is not the public record. The public record is the newspaper. You have to put it in the newspaper. Now you have given public record. Anything that you put in the newspaper, they're going to give you what is called a affidavit of publication. Once you receive that affidavit of publication, you will now attach that to your affidavit of ownership so that it can be recorded at your county recorder's office. Because it has been put in the newspaper legally, your county recorder's office cannot refuse you. Okay, so that will stop the war on, they won't record my documents. Even though they're not supposed to look at the documents, they cannot make any legal determination on what it is. You can put something, Boo Boo is the fool and Donald Duck is um, friends with Mickey Mouse. As long as a notary signed off on it, because a notary is higher than a judge. A notary has one of uh, the highest level under the state, believe it or not, because three notaries can actually overturn a judge's signature. Um, just a little, tip if you're dealing with a court case go get that see if on those court documents regardless of what type of court case it is if it's uh traffic court if it's evictions or whatever that document they, they send you in that complaint summons excuse me that they send you in the mail supposedly has a notary signature on there take it down there and see if you can get that thing certified I promise you, as sure as my name is T. Mika and not T. Mika, they're going to tell you that that notary is not in the system. So now guess what? That just shows you that that court case is not in voice. So if anybody fighting a court case, I literally just told you how to stop it because those are not notaries and they're not supposed to be signing their own paperwork. You don't even see the notary seal or any of these summonses because they're not really notaries and they know that people are not going to pay attention to it. Okay. So... I'm trying to share my screen, y'all, and it won't share. I'm going to cry. So back to getting yourself on the record properly. Um, for those of you who have an extra device and you're looking, please, everybody, pull up the S as in Sam, F as in Frank, 181 form. When somebody got it up and want to be, um, let me know when y'all just say anything when y'all got it up and let me know that somebody got it up. I don't know how much stuff is people literally still registered for this live. So it's interrupting me from being able to um, do a screen share. 
And I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that. Oh, shit. Um, who got, you got the format? You do? I'm going to unmute you. As soon as I find you. Now, I know some of you guys that may already filled out this form. Um... I got you unmuted. At the oh, top, okay. Of, okay. At the top of the forum, can you tell me what what uh, the name of the company, the Office of Personnel and Management? Um. Yeah, Office of Personnel Management Guide uh, to Personal Data Standards. That part. Yes, that part right there. And then it says the ethnicity and race identification. Please read the Department Act okay. statement and instructions before completing this form. Come here, you can put it right down, cut it off. Okay. So that form that you guys fill out, can you read to me the definition of black? And then can you read to me the definition of white? And for you guys that are following on, um, for you guys that are following along, is gonna give you their definition of what white and black mean. Can you tell me what the definition of black is? So the definition of black is a person having origin in any of the black racial groups of Africa. Okay. So does any of us got origins of the black racial groups of Africa? Do that even sound right? That 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 don't even make sense to it. And when you read it for yourself, it's like, what? Right? Okay, so read American Indian for me. All right. So American Indian says person having origins in any of the original peoples of North and South America, including Central America, and who maintains the tribal affiliation or community attachment. Now, we all know that we are the original American Indians, right? Everybody know that. If you don't know that, you know it today. We are the original American Indians. And the reason they do not want us to know this is because <laughs> they put in a trust. Oh, I believe it was back in 1946. They put like $46 trillion into a trust account waiting for the American Indians to say, I'm American Indian. Period. A matter of fact, hold on, give me two seconds. Let me tell y'all where something y'all can find something. Hold on, one second. If you look under 31 USC 1321. That is for trust funds. And if you look at number 67, it says a miscellaneous, look at the word they use, a miscellaneous trust fund for the American Indians. We are the American Indians. So you got to get it on the record that you're an American Indian. So on that SF-181 form, for everybody who has that form up, you are going to check the American Indian box if that fits you. Can you read to me the definition of white? The definition of white is a, a person having origin in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. <laughs> so what are we, guys? Uh, we have what north african i want to say middle eastern correct so because i told you guys in the beginning everything is wordplay right when you look up the original meaning of black do you know it means to be pale it means to be without color 
Because if you look at black and look at us, I ain't none of us black. We copper. We light copper, dark copper, medium copper. So when you do that SF-181 form, you are going to choose American Indian if that fits you. And you're going to choose white. Because technically we the white. So when you think about that and you see that definition, it makes you think back in slavery days, who was really supposed to use the white fountain? And who was really supposed to use the black? Mm. Okay. Would it also have information in there from the American Indian or the Indian Act? Yeah, it absolutely do. Did you guys know that we have our own um, Bill of Rights? When they came out with the Civil Rights Bill, inside of that bill was the American Indians Bill, our Civil Rights Bill, our Bill of Rights that says that we have the right to our own nationality. We had, and it's crazy because one of the words that they use is, it says we have the right to manifest. Now, you know, that was one of our things. Oh, it does say, look, look, uh, whoever under Paulette Crawford, you turned your head to the side like, er, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It said that we have the right to manifest. It said that we have the right to have our own educational system for our children. But because we have chose acquiescence, which is silence, they keep thinking we're a U.S. citizen. But how can we be a U.S. citizen if the United States is only the 10 square miles of the District of Columbia? Okay. So the first form that you guys are going to need is that SF-181 form. You're going to highlight white. You're going to highlight American Indian. Now, if you notice, there is no signature part on that form. But when you know the law and it says that a document is not considered legal unless it's notarized, right? They can get that piece of paper like they've been doing and make it y'all think they're doing something because they ain't responding and they're doing absolutely nothing. So what you're going to do with that same form, you're going to turn that form around to the back you are going to sign your beneficiary signature. Do everybody know what your beneficiary signature is? I will explain it. It is your first name slash middle name, colon, last name, space, there ain't no comma, no none of that, then beneficiary in all capital letters. That is how you write your beneficiary signature. But now the law also says that anytime you're sending a security, it needs to, one, the taxes need to be paid on it. So you guys are going to affix a 10 cent postal stamp on the lower right hand corner of that SF-181 form. You're going to cancel that stamp out. Now, I personally go to the post office and I make the post office cancel out my steps. Some post offices don't like to roll with it. So you either can do it where you make them cancel it out or you can use your thumbprint and don't use red. Everybody got red. Your blood is what? Blue until it hits what? Oxygen. Red stand for dead. Blue stand for alive. We are bringing you back to life. Don't use no red thumbprint. Use a red one. I mean, a blue one. So on the SF-181 form, American Indian, white. Turn it around to the back. Beneficiary signature, 10 cent stamp. You can cancel it out with the blue ink. Now, when you send that form, because now you have attached your signature because anything that you sign turns into a security. I don't care if you sign a napkin and a banker find it, they are going to monetize off of it. Okay. So the law says, because we have to keep our hands clean and be in honor. You guys will understand that this is all equity and in equity, we have to be in honor. Even though they screwing us like ain't nothing with no grease, we still got to do it the proper way. 
So when you mail this information off, it has to be sent registered mail. Let me tell y'all something with these green cards and I can mail it free, stop falling for it. Stop, first of all, stop being cheap. It's gonna cost you to get free just a little bit. The law says, there you go. It has to be sent registered mail because it's a security. Not just that, you are able to now invoke the Postmaster General if because that package is insured. Registered mail is so powerful that it sits on the box truck by itself in a lockbox. That should tell you something. Okay. Um, so you're going to send that to the registered mail. You will be sending it to the Office of Personnel that is the name that is top of the form. That is the address that you will send it to and it will be registered mail. Now you could do registered mail through the post office because it gives you chain of, a chain of custody. If you don't do it through the post office, you can do it through FedEx or UPS, okay? How many people have done their United States citizen search? and received it back. Nobody. Well, a few of you guys I think have. So as I stated, they have assumed through acquiescence that we are United States citizens, okay? Let's prove to them that we're not. When I tell y'all guys, this is so easy, you don't need no affidavits, you don't need no nothing. So under my E-Verify, and unfortunately, it won't allow me to share my screen. So, what I will do is um, I, I will provide, God knows I don't want to say this, <laughs> I don't want to say this, but I, uh, I, I will provide you guys a step-by-step -step book that I do have, that I did create, um, and I really only give it out to my private class, that walks you through the E-Verify system, okay? It will walk you through how to, one, get on the record that you are non-citizen national. And I said, I want my screen to work. Hold on, guys. Let me see if I can get my screen to work. Because I wanted to actually walk you guys page by page. So hold on one second. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. If I don't, I don't know if I can let it back in after that. Hold on. Okay, the My e verify system is where you are to lock your social security number. You are to go on that system and put yourself in non-citizen national status. Now, I do know that the My e verify system is for a job and I'm like, why are we doing it on there? Because believe it or not, every company that you work for, every company that you are supposedly paying a bill to actually has you listed as an employee and they're not paying taxes. Absolutely, they do. They have everyone listed as an employee and they use the My E-Verify system. But guess what? You about to lock it down. You're going to lock the My E-Verify system down. You're going to put yourself in non-citizen national status. Now from that, on that same website, I'm going to have to give out this ebook. Under the United States Immigration and Citizenship website, if you click on FOIA, Freedom of Information Requests, you want to select the I-94, which is the nationalization card. In the other box, because there's no spot to ask about your nationality. So you're going to click on the other box. Within that box, you are going to write this. Let me know when you guys are ready. Like when I tell you, I'm gonna give y'all everything y'all got to put in these boxes. Okay. You will write, please provide me with the citizenship status of 
then you will write your name several different ways. You'll write a first, middle, last, last, middle, first, at least do three. So they'll have something to work with. Believe it or not, do you guys know you have a birth certificate on four different levels? For you guys that have already went and did this search, you guys didn't pay attention to the it ads that you want a copy of your birth certificate. The birth certificate that is actually located in Puerto Rico is actually held on the federal level. So when you're doing that search, there is a button that says birth certificate requested. It's gonna look totally different. Speaking of birth certificates, you have a birth certificate on the state level. You have a birth certificate on the county level. The county level birth certificate is the actual one that was put in the register of deeds book that made you be a transmitting utility. That is the one that got the doctor's signature. Everybody talk about the long form one. Go to your county. Whatever county you were born in, they have that copy. Then at your city level, you have what's called the birth record. If I was you, I would get all of them because all of them have different serial numbers on there. And if you make it far enough in your studies, you will know that you're actually able, supposed to sell those securities to your bank, like right pay to the order on that birth certificate and take it to your bank. Yeah, you can do that. It can be done. It is done. We do it all the time. Those coupons and those statements that you get in the mail that say it's a bill, the top part is actually a bond, the bottom part is a dividend check. Yeah, you're supposed to sell that to the banks. <laughs> Yeah. You're not supposed to say do a deposit. You're supposed to say I gave you $100 and I invested in hey, You're supposed to give me dollar for dollar back. So I'm supposed to get $200 back. Yeah, that's how you're supposed to use the banks. Because I keep telling y'all it's the bank. Why y'all think they're trying to take my page? Because I keep telling, ain't nobody else telling y'all that it's the bank for me. Because it's the bank. It's Chase, it's Wells Fargo, it's BNC. Period. Okay. That United States Citizen Church is done online, but let me tell y'all something. They are going to stop it from being online real quickly. Please get on there. Please get on there, okay? And do your search because I am unable to share my screen. Let me tell y'all something. When I know, when I try to do something, the dark side tries to do everything to stop me from trying to help the people. So everybody that is in attendance, everybody that did get it, you guys will also get is something like an ebook that will walk you through each one of these steps on how to do the citizen search, how to um, create your Minnesota 220 rule. I will pass that on to everybody. Um, and I think to be able, so you'll have something physically in your face while you're filing your documents. If you guys would like me to do that, I guess throw a hand up or something. Let me know. If y'all don't, then I won't. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like that a bit. Hey, there we go. There we go. You know what I'm saying? They go low, I go higher. Ain't that what she said? That's what she, he said. She said. They said. Him, her, it. You know what I'm saying? They like, and, and that's that's just what it's going to be. <laughs> don't y'all be laughing at me. That's, that's just what it's going to be. You know, y'all see they block my page. I say, well, fuck it. I'm going to give away five free spots. I actually gave away like 11. Some things I just don't always do publicly. You know, if I see something and I'm moved to give them something, then that's what it is that I'll do. So I will provide everybody an ebook that will walk you through everything that I'm talking about now, only simply because I cannot share my screen. And I'm not about to tell everybody disconnect and we get back phone. I'm not about to go through all that, people. But I'm going to give you your explanation now and I'm going to give you your foundation now. And then you will have something physically to look at because some people are hands-on people and I understand that. So because of the inconvenience, even though the inconvenience was not on Path to Freedom, but because this is Path to Freedom and I do everything with excellence, if I got to go the extra mile to make sure that everybody is satisfied, guess what? I'm going to go the extra mile because I need all 231 of these people on the side to be free. Okay? So... You're going to do that United States citizen search. It's going to take about 10 days or less for you to get it back. Let me tell y'all something. That's the most powerful. And when I say powerful, that is the most powerful piece of paper that you're going to ever be able to have in your life. Let me tell you why. Anybody that's been to court and it took a plea deal, what is one of the questions that they ask you? Are you a U.S. citizen, don't they? Sometimes, and guess what? Do you know that at the moment that you say no case is dismissed? 
I'll shock some of y'all today, did That's tax court, baby. It's tax court. The only people responsible for taxes are what? U.S. citizens. At the point that you just prove you're not a U.S. citizen, they cannot tax you. Believe it or not, it's only 10 cents to get out of jail, but that's four case thing. <laughs> it's this it. Post stamp. That's it. That's it. To pay a person buying is 50 cents. Better yet, your first call is really supposed to be to the clerk's office to ask them to give you an on-call buy. But that's why they always give you one phone call, y'all. Believe it or not. Okay. So when you get that United States search, along with the SF-181 form, okay, those two forms are absolutely positively important. Then you're going to do the passport application. All of this um, copper moonshine stuff, to, no, care of, brackets around, your, your zip code, let me tell you something. As long as you got mail coming to your house, you are up under federal jurisdiction. I'll say it again. As long as you got mail coming to your house, you are up under federal jurisdiction. You're supposed to be getting private mail. Now, if you like me and don't like to drive nowhere else to get my mail, then I did what's called a private mail form. And I made myself, my beneficiary, the agent for the all caps. So when the mail come, it's not directed towards me. And I just took myself out of federal jurisdiction. For those of you that live in Texas, if you notice, you guys have no mailboxes in front of your house. If you've ever been to Texas, do you notice they don't have any mailboxes? Because Texas is not up under the United States. And they are stopping you from going up under federal jurisdiction by making sure you don't have any mailboxes in front of your house because the mailboxes the direct connect to the treasury, which is actually a bank. That's just like if you research the P.O. box that is on any of your statements that y'all call bills or remittance transfers, if you Google that address, it's going to take you back to a post office and they do what's called lockbox funding. That's why them codes don't work. Because it ain't going. Okay. So when you fill out your passport application to make sure that you are put in non-citizen status, the Department of State website for passport says that if you want to be considered a non-citizen national, which puts you on the do not detain list, guys. So please listen. It says that you need to provide satisfactory documentary evidence that you are not a citizen. Which one of those pieces of papers that I just told y'all to get is going to provide that, that status? Anybody? YG. What, the, uh, the SF-181? Nope. Nope. That's just going to give you your your um, your ethnicity. Rogers. If they don't answer, since you just go straight to the next one. Acedia. It's going to be that um, the request that you get back from the FOIA. Boom. The document, thank you, the document that you guys get when you do the FOIA search is the actual documentary evidence that the post office is requesting from you to provide that you are a non U.S. citizen national. It didn't say nothing about no affidavit. It didn't say nothing about no care of. It didn't say nothing about no none of that. It said provide us with satisfactory. Satisfactory means that it comes from them. The United States Citizenship and Office of Administration um, Immigration is ran by the Department of Homeland Security. So when you order your passport card, the booklet makes you a citizen. I will say it again. The booklet makes you a citizen. Now, if you are a person that has to do international travel, if you have to apply for the booklet, only use that booklet when you're traveling internationally, but you are going to make sure 
that you have attached that FOIA search showing that you are a non-citizen national. It does put you on the do not detain list. Yes, they will try to pull you up and it'll be like, don't touch them, do not detain, do not trespass. I know y'all probably see the video that's popping around that's talking about that. That is absolutely true. And it is obtained by taking that search that you guys are going to do and you're gonna add that to your application. If you have already applied for your passport card or booklet, you're going to do an update, right? The DS, you know, the DS-11 is the regular or whatever the other form is. Um, you're going to fill that out and you're going to attach that documentary evidence with you. <laughs> Instead of going to your post office to sign off on your passport application where you got to wait to get a, uh, an appointment. Did you guys know that you can go down to your clerk's office and get it done? And you can walk right in and they'll sign it? Wow. Mm. Yeah, they ain't going to tell y'all that, is it? Mm -mm. Okay. Yes. So you go right there and you will add that form with it and you're going to mail it off. Now, because you have to provide them with a copy of your birth certificate, am I correct when you're going to get your passport for your identification? Your birth certificate is a security, correct? Mm -hmm. 31 USC 3123 says that if you don't send that registered mail back to the registered mail, you are now committing mail fraud. Y'all don't want to get no mail fraud, right? Please don't. Don't get no mail fraud. So you're going to make sure that you send it register mail. And if you look on the passport website, there's an emergency address where you can send it in to them. And then they'll make sure you had a passport in about three weeks and you don't have to have an emergency appointment. So you're going to do the, the, do the search. You're going to add that form in with a copy of your identification, which is actually your birth certificate. If you've already done the certificate of ownership or if you got your birth certificate authenticated, that is fine for you to send um, the authenticated one when you do your passport application. The most important part is to send that FOIA search along with it. And that right there on a federal level will cover you. You are now on the record as who you say your nationality is and who your ethnicity is. Y'all didn't hear me say one time about no damn affidavit to y'all. Not once. Because you don't need an affidavit. And the thing about these affidavits is the affidavit is only, it's see actually, but that's for the way. Thank you, bro. Um, y'all have to understand all these templates all these affidavits, the only people that have the same documentation is corporations, guys. You guys are still acting like a corporation. If all 231 of these people on this live take the same exact document and send it in, you know what they're going to call us? A corporation or a cult. Dead serious. And they're not going to take what you're doing serious. We are our own individuals. But more importantly, Enough in their arsenal, ain't that what I, they ain't that what they said? We have enough in our arsenal to combat it. So what's going to happen is, as they keep getting all these affidavits, they're going to stop accepting them. But you know what they cannot say they're going to accept is what their website says. It says provide me document satisfactory documentary evidence, and who is higher than the Department of Homeland Security? Nobody. So once you send that document in the passport application in with the documentary evidence, unless you become a terrorist of the United States to get the eyes of the Department of Homeland Security, the sheriff can't touch you, regular PD can't touch you, it will show in their system and that is how you do it and that's all. I know y'all probably on this line, like it got to be more than that and she killing me. No, I am not. Boom. When I tell y'all that is it. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it, guys. I, look, it is a lot easier. Y'all stick with me. Just stick with me. I promise you, I'm going to get y'all somewhere. That's all you need. We, we, so now, you just took, now you just took care of the federal level, right? You're done. That's all you got to do for the federal level. You want to do not detain this, this, that, and the other. But we know our state like to play games with us because they full of shit. So what you're going to do is now you're going to put yourself under common law 
status. There are several ways to put yourself under common law status, because as I said, up until now, it has all been acquiescence. You have been quiet. Oh, before I go there, the SF5 form. Can somebody pull up an SS5 form for me? So y'all see what this SF5 form, it is the social security application. Am I correct? These people will not let me share my life. So I'm telling y'all, sometimes Zoom be trying to, because they listen to everything. I don't care what they say, they be listening. And I have not had an issue. And I do a class every Sunday where I cannot share my screen. But it's okay, because we're going to work through it. And now y'all just going to get a, get an ebook. And I'm going to tell y'all just like this. Please don't distribute my stuff out. Please don't sell it the way it's going to be sent to you guys. I know everybody that touched that many times you opened it, how long you was reading on it. Please don't play with me, okay? Because I'm, I'm going to give. <laughs> and I'm just, you know, I'm trusting these 232 people on this live. Don't make me regret it. Because in the end, it'll just make me say I'm not doing nothing else. And I know y'all probably want that do not to pay, do not collect status on them bills, okay? And I can tell y'all to do it, but don't play with me, okay? Please don't. So the SF5 form, you are going to redo that form, okay? Even if you already got a social security card, you're going to redo this form. So if anybody got that form pulled up, hopefully you do. I haven't pulled up. You guys just can't see it, but I'm going to read something to you. It says, in order, on I'm on the... Uh, second page I think it is yes I am on the second page of the SS5 form guys evidence of identity we know what that is driver's license passport personally I will use the passport card um just a little FYI about the passport card we know they're talking about the real ID that everyone is going to have to have if you want to fly the U.S. passport card satisfies the uh qualification of you being able to have the real ID, okay? You are going to get rid of that state driver's license unless you want to keep being a migrant farmer worker in agriculture. That driver's license is a contract, This, which is why the police can't ultimately stop you, okay? Um, so please get your passport card. But on the second page, it goes down. You see how it says that they cannot accept the birth certificate for evidence of identity. But it also says your evidence of U.S. citizenship status and your evidence of your immigration status. Okay. Do you see what it asks for? The document that I-94 form that I said for you guys to do the search for, for your FOIA. It says you must provide a current unexpired document issued by the Department of Homeland Dam Security. Didn't I just say that? Showing your immigration status, such as Form I-551, Form I-94. Mm. That same letter, guys, that you are sending for your passport, you will attach it to your Social Security application to prove that you are not a U.S. citizen. That is the, the system that you want to show that you are not a U.S. citizen for, okay? If we go a little further, y'all understand why I said that. So you will take that SF-181 form along with this SS-5 form and your FOIA search. You're going to send it to the big portion of the social security office. Don't be trying to go into your local office talking about here. They're going to look at you like you're crazy, okay? they That's above their pay grade. Mm. My daughter, be careful. <laughs> okay? They, uh -oh. they just is in the dark. It's, it's okay, y'all. You know, it, they just is in the dark as we are, even though they work for them. Okay? You're going to sit it up top because that's where it matters. 
Okay. So you're sending the SF-181 form. You're sending your USICS search with this SS-5 application. So now let's go over the, the application. Do not put your middle name in. Do anybody know why I see? Hold on. Let me get back to y'all so I can see because I got the form. Can anybody tell me why when you get a new um, social security card, you're not putting your middle name on? Or did anybody know that it made a difference? I didn't know. Okay. If, okay. Filling out applications. Do you notice that the middle name box always say it's not required? Like if you don't put it there, everything on because your trust ain't got your middle name on it. Hmm. It only has your surname, which is your last name and your first name. That's it. So when you redo this SS5 form, skip the middle name box. You don't have to put anything there. When it goes down and it gets to asking you about your ethnicity, you see it says your response is voluntary. But how many of y'all went on ahead real quick and said I'm dead by checking Black African American? Because we have been conditioned to do so. So now we already know that from the SF-181 form, what are we? American Indian and what? White. 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 Thank you. So when y'all fill out the oh, SF-5 okay. form, you need to check American Indian and White. What is your evidence? That form that you just turned in, the SF-181 form. You don't need the middle name. Let's go down some more on this form and ask the shoe. Where it says citizenship. What do you guys think you're supposed to put in citizenship and then tell me why? Non-citizen national. Non-citizen national? So what, which, which box are you gonna select? I don't know who I'm talking to. Let me get back to you. Okay. So what box would you guys select for your citizenship? Anybody? Who is that? Just put the, put the thumb up because there's so many of you guys on here. And tell me what box would you guys, would you guys pick? Cassandra. Cassandra. Uh, will we put legal alien allowed to work? Nope. Are you an illegal alien? You an illegal alien? You want to get deported? You want to get deported? No, I said legal. So are you a legal, legal alien? Are you a legal alien? Oh no. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's okay. So the thing okay. is, we're learning. Yes, we're so. learning. So. Oh, it's look, I'm oh, it's, it's, they messing it up. Can y'all hear me double talking? Because I'm double talking. Um, you're gonna put other. Who is that that said other? And can you tell me why you're gonna put other? None of those, none of those are our status. That's why. What else? Just looking at that form, what do you see that will make you say that? I want to show y'all how they put it literally. Uh oh, is it letting me share my screen now? Yay. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. Look at God. They be working. Okay, what my screen say? Because I can't see it. It's so it's showing, but hold on. This is crazy. It went off again. Oh, wow. Y'all see how they trying to play me? Because it went off, didn't it? Yeah. 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 So y'all see it's not me. So Zoom trying to play me too. Yeah. Lord, it's it's not that. you because they're, they're, it's like everybody talking at the same time and I thought it was muted. That was me. I hit my whiteboard and that's why I came up. You got to hit your whiteboard to share your screen. Now I've never had to hit my whiteboard to share my screen. I have just been able to hit share screen and it'll work. My share screen is not working at all. It's, it's lit up green. But I'm going to tell y'all, this is not the first. I know these people be listening, but let them listen. Shit. Hopefully they learn some shit. I don't know. Um, but let's hold up. Who can see what you share? It's still not. You say you are co editing Pablo's screen. 
but I shouldn't. He shouldn't even be able to share a screen. I thought I cut that off. But anyway, um, when you guys look at, at that form, what other reason is making you say the number three? Oh, they didn't close. Because we, we have to give instructions. We have to give instructions. Rogers. I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, I, I, I didn't um, uh, raise my hand for that. I don't know. I don't have the form in front of me. So I'm, I'm eagerly uh, listening to find out. Okay. Okay. Roy. Wow. They even closed all of my screens. This is crazy. Yeah. From, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can hear you. Wow. Okay. So. I see that it says other C instructions on page three. And then That's when you go back to page three, I believe the only reason I'm thinking is because it does say about the I-94 form that we were talking about earlier. There you go. That is the answer I was looking for, guys. So we just went over page three where I told you guys what is requesting to make sure that you are classified properly. And then it asks you on line five, see page three, but nobody normally looks, they go straight to the part where they got to fill out the information and nobody is reading it. So that the way that they have this system set up and this little game that they're playing with us, they have to write it. They have to say it somehow, some way they have to tell us. They bank on us not reading and nobody's reading. I can see that evident for trying to get this class together, but I'm gonna get y'all together because <laughs> you got, and I'm serious. Like people who take my other, my private class, they'll tell you, I be on it. Like I hold no bars because when it's time for you to walk in that bank and get out of minor status, you better know what you're talking about. Cause ain't no, let me go out past the freedom. They gonna be like, well, who the hell is about the freedom? Cause you were in there to get your own freedom. So why do path gotta help you get your freedom? She got hers already. And didn't nobody do none of what I'm doing for y'all. I wish they did. And this is ultimately why I do classes because I put myself in you guys' shoes as brand new, never seen it before. What do I need? And this is why we going through these forms the way we going through them because nobody did that for me. And the littlest thing would get overlooked. Our brain is powerful, powerful. For y'all that don't know, your brain is powerful. So because we have been conditioned, as soon as we see the word citizenship, to immediately check U.S. citizen, we've been conditioned. Unplug yourself from the matrix. They ain't make that movie for nothing. But you still got to know how to live in the public and the private. You see how he had to keep going back and forth to the different worlds to get what it is that he needed. Nobody is 100% private. And if they tell you that they is, they're freaking lying to you. Not unless they live off grid somewhere. You have to know how to operate in the public while living in the private. And you got to understand the traps that they put in their forms. So the reason that you will select other on the SS5 form is because you're going to attach that I-94 search, that U.S. citizen search. You're going to attach that. Guess what? They can rebut an affidavit. Let me look at y'all while I say this. They can rebut an affidavit. They don't have to answer an affidavit because if you just sent it to the Social Security Administration and then you didn't put care of whoever the head is of that department that they need to go to, the law says that they don't even have to acknowledge it. It also says that if you don't send a registered mail, they don't have to acknowledge it, which is why you guys are not getting the analogies back. They don't have to acknowledge it. So when you redo your SS5 application, you're going to leave the middle name box blocked alone. When you get to citizenship status, you're going to press other and you are going to provide them based off of page three, the documentation that they're asking for. So guess what they can't do? They can't call you talking about we not accepting this. Why? Because page three said that this is what you wanted to prove that I'm not who you guys thought I was all the time. This is how you win. I take their words and put it in their face. For instance, the DMV. When I went and deregistered my vehicles, no, I don't have no tags on none of my cars. No, my cars are not registered to the state. No, I do not have a driver's license because when I realized that I was getting pimped like I was an employee and I ain't getting no check on the first and the 15th and no damn state insurance, they can have it back. 
I didn't know that I was a micro farmer in agriculture without my permission because every last person who has ever had a driver's license, whether it's expired, whether it's suspended, until you rescind it, you are a migrant farmer worker in agriculture, which is why the police always ask you, you got the driver's license, you got the driver's license, because they, and that's now your contract. All that, I didn't consent. Yes, you did. If that plate goes back, it's a state car. That's why you get a certificate for the title from the state. So when I went to go redo mine, and tell them I didn't want it anymore. Do you know what I used? I didn't go in there with no black law. I ain't going, I got the right to travel in all these Supreme Court cases. Hell no, I ain't do that. I took North Carolina's DMV title handbook, section 20-5.1. That says, I am exempt from mandated taxes, certificate for the title, plates, and insurance if I am only using the road to go from one property to the next. Mm. I think that's all we use the road for, don't we? We going from one place to the next place. Okay. Absolutely. You don't have a motor vehicle. You have a private motor carrier. Big difference. Because a motor vehicle means that it's self-propelled. So how many of y'all in here got a self-propelled car that drives on its own? And I ain't talking about no Tesla either. <laughs> it's a self-propelled car. Why do y'all think they came out with the electronic cars, guys? Why they want everybody to get one? Because the definition of motor vehicle is a car that self propels and pulls. Sound like a tractor, don't it? But that goes back to migrant farmer worker in agriculture. So I gave that example so that you guys will understand that everything that you want to take back from them, they already wrote it for you. You just have to know where to find it. As y'all see from the SS5 form, it's on their document. What you have to say to not no longer be classified as a U.S. slave, period. It says in on their passport, on the Department of Website, just the Department of State website, just like it said on that SS5 form, provide documentary evidence from the Department of Homeland Security, that's your paper. And see, I'm going to tell you, I don't know how many of you guys have actually done that process already. And you guys are looking at your the website. It already says that at a certain date, they're about to stop doing it electronically. They already knew we was about to get to asking about this form. Then you got the mail it in. Anybody got no time for that shit? Y'all better jump on it real quick. And if y'all smart, before I give out some information that I paid for on the line, I'll make sure I do it first. Because <clears throat> you've been and told Mary, John, Pete, Paul, they didn't know I did it. Then you went to go do it and they like, it didn't work for me. And you like, well, damn, I told y'all and it worked for me. Don't, don't let it happen to you. But now the process in what you guys are doing now is actually their process. That has been my key to success. I take their words, I take their policy and I put it back in their face and they never rebut it. When it comes to Wells Fargo, if y'all got anybody on here got Wells Fargo, I will go pull the terms and conditions book because it say on page, I think it's 42, that your debit card ain't never supposed to apply. And it don't say nothing about no $35 overdraft fee, and it don't say nothing about that. It says that they are supposed to take care of every last one of those transactions that come through. It's in their terms and conditions. It also said that they wouldn't give your information to a non-affiliate. <clears throat> So early warning services and everybody else they reporting to, it said that it will not do that. That's a violation between you and them, baby. That's a collect the bag moment. You can collect the bag off of that. But they are banking on us not reading, which is why I'm showing all, saying all of these examples is in their books. It ain't in black law. It's in their policy. We're not dealing with government. We're dealing with private agencies. And when you start treating these people like motherfucking Walmart, okay, you start treating them like Target, you, you'll win. Because they don't care what Black Law said. But I know when I turned in my SS5 with no middle name on there, and I made sure that I checked that box, American Indian, that now you're going to understand that I'm the American Indian. And it's now in the proper record of where it's supposed to be. So a recap on the federal level, okay? You guys are doing the citizen search. You guys are doing the My E Verify. Within the My, v er, uh, My E Verify system, you will be checking non citizen national. You will be doing the SF 181 form. If American India apply to you, select it. 
even if you are Caucasian, you better select that white button because Caucasian is on there too and that's not a nationality. So you will also select the white button. Selection, I'm sorry. On the back of that form to make sure that that is now a legal form that they have to accept, you are going to input your signature, beneficiary signature, first slash middle, colon, last name, space, beneficiary in all capital letters. Your name is in upper lowercase in the way that it's supposed to be. If you even notice on that SF-181 form, it don't ask you for your middle name, do it? <laughs> so that It sure does. You're going to redo the SS5 form. When you get that um, UCIS search back, you will attach that form to it. You will find the main Social Security Department, and that's where it'll go. But those addresses and everything that you guys need, because as I said, I appreciate you guys' patience, appreciate you guys being on. I am going to provide an ebook to every last one of you that's going over the same thing that I'm saying now. It will have the right addresses in there. Like for y'all that authenticated and you sent it to Washington, it's wrong. People out here selling a damn ebook for $250 selling y'all that the authentication eight dollars and send it to washington is west virginia but that goes for people not doing their due diligence and fact check me what the other things that people are saying i say fact check me all the time anytime every time so it will be in the ebook the 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 addresses and things that these forms are supposed to go to that make sure that you have it right that's the federal level now, when it comes to your state, because I believe in doing double and triple protections, you're going to go under copyrightdepot.com. It is $17.50 to copyright your name. When you go on copyrightdepot.com, it's going to ask you for the title. The title will be your all caps name. There's going to be two reasons to why you are requesting this copyright. You're going to put business and the other selection says commercial documents. That's the, those are the selections. In the summary box, you will write this. Let me know when you guys are ready. any and all derivatives of first, middle, last, last, middle, first, put your name in every which way you can, first, middle, um, first, middle, initial, last, last, middle, initial, first, full name out, first and last by itself. You'll put all of those names in that summary box. Now, due to the fact that the government has made you a business and you are the agent for that business, because it's a business, because only a corporation can deal with a corporation, which is ultimately why the straw man was created. Only a trust can deal with a trust, which is why if you're going to try to get your trust, you better make sure you have a trust set up and it need to be a living trust because you're trying to come back to life. So it can't just be any old trust with any old John Blow name on there. It has to be the correct trust, which is your all, what is um, a living estate trust with your all capital letter name attached to it. So since the corporation has made you a business, solidify the business. You're gonna go on the irs.gov website. You're gonna get an LLC. The, the name of your LLC is that all capital letter name that the government has now made a entity. When it asks you to, for the purposes, it will be for banking purposes. It will ask you when would you like it to be the start date? 
you can go back 25 years. Make that your start date. Go back as far as it'll let you, but it'll let you go back 25 years. So you are going to get an LLC. So for example, if your name Mary John Ross, it'll say Mary John Ross LLC. You have now solidified the business in which it is that they've already made you. Now you can legally act as the agent for that business. And everything that the state does is tax purposes. So that is one of the documents that will also go to your state department. After you're done copywriting your name, you need to also trademark it. It is more cost effective to trademark in your state and not through the US federal government, which I think is like 350. <clears throat> Certain states is like $50, $75. Every state is different. But then you're gonna also trademark your name. Once you have done a copyright and a trademark, you will add those on public records and you're gonna put it in the newspaper. Once you get your affidavit of publication back from those documents, then you're gonna take them and record them down at your county recorder's office. Because you have the affidavit of publication added to it, they will not give you one issue. If you feel like you cannot do it, reach out to the notaries that's on here. Y'all seen her. She got notaries that she has trained in every state that does the apostille um, portion for you. If you feel like you can't do it or your timing is not right, find you a notary that know how to do an apostille and have them go for you. Go get it registered. Then you're gonna go under copy um, commonlawcourts.org. The very first thing that you have to do under commonlawcourts.org is register your birth certificate. You won't do nothing else on that website until you register. Once you register your birth certificate and you get the email notification back, at that point, if you have children, you can do a baby D. At that point, you can take over your fictitious name. There is documents for each one of them. It will also be explained within the book. Once you get those documents, you want to make sure that you put it on commercial paper. Commercial paper is at least 30 weight. You can get the Southampton from Walmart or et cetera. Make sure if you're doing under the common law, um, under the common law status, you want the light cream paper. It's so almost like resume paper, but you want it to be at least 30 weight. Those are the standards for commercial paper. If anybody tell you it's 24 run. After you get those documents and they're printed off, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to turn it around on the back. You're going to sign it so that you can get it notarized. You're going to do the same exact process. You're going to go get that notary signature certified. And then you're going to go get an apostille from your secretary of state on that document. The reason that you're getting an apostille on that document, because once again, apostilles is for you to use a document within the contracting states. That way, that, that document of your common law status will be good in Atlanta, it will be good in New York, it will be good wherever, because those are all the contracting states. You're going to also do a common law copyright. I promise you, you go on Scribd, you go on Google, you can type in common law copyright. I will put a few examples in the ebook as well, and you're going to do a common law copyright. Everything that you do with these people is going to need to be notarized. Everything you do is going to need to be put on public record. 
because you have to say, I let the public know my stance the same way they do when they do a foreclosure. Do you know most people don't know that they house then got sold until they showed up to the door and you know what they tell them? They be like, well, I didn't know it. I didn't get a letter. You know, the first thing they're going to say, well, we put it in the newspaper. I learned that the hard way. Told you guys I started this when my mom died. I was brand new. We talking about 2012 when she passed away. She ain't on no damn body. She was a millionaire. And the courts didn't like what I was doing. And they sold everything in my mother's house. And when I went to court and I said, how can they do this? You know what they told me? Well, we put it in the newspaper. The fuck? Don't nobody read no newspapers. So the information that I'm giving to you guys is because I've been through a trial and error. I wish I would have known that that's what they use. And when I am trying to put my status on the record that a certain portion of it needs to go in a newspaper. Ladies, gentlemen, husband, wives, mothers, fathers, when you have these babies, if your child is under the age of 18 and in this process, you are trying to take them back from your state. You have to put a ad in the newspaper of your bear, your your baby's birth. Back in the day, they used to do birth announcements. They used to put it in a family Bible with two witnesses. We have to get back to that. So if you have a baby that is under 18 and you want to get them out the grabs of the state, I don't care if they're 17 and a half, you better remember what time you had them. Go back. And you're going to put an ad in a newspaper, get you two witnesses that was there, get it noted. Put an ad in the newspaper, please. There will be a link inside of the ebook. Like, I am just overdone that they won't let me share my screen. But you know what? That's better for y'all because y'all wasn't going to get this ebook because I was going to show y'all every page. But shit, now y'all going to get the book, baby. <laughs> please don't get my book out. But y'all going to get the book since I can't share my screen. I tell you, every time they go, they go low, I'm going to go a little bit higher. They can't stop me. And I know it's Zoom. I'm about to build my own fucking interface or something. I don't know. Um, Put in the newspaper. Anything you put in the newspaper, you're going to go record. Make sure you get it notarized. So once you got that e that I, the paperwork from the IRS saying that you are an LLC, once you have the common law copyright birth certificate, once you have your common law copyright notice, your USIC and that SF-181 form. You're going to put all of that together. You are going to send that, y'all ready? To the head of the DOT, Department of Transportation. The head of the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. You're going to send it to your governor. And more importantly, you're going to send it to their parent company. Do anybody know who their parent, the supposed to be state officials, parent company is? Anybody? We all here learning. So if you think that's what it is, just say that. Nobody, no question is a wrong question. No question is a dumb question. Department of Revenue. There you go. <coughs> if y'all didn't know, now you know. All of your states supposed to be government. Are their parent company is the Department of Revenue. So when you get that document, those documents together throughout your marriage, you've been holding it. Oh, no. You want to prove that he's been abusing you. All righty then. I would hurt somebody, but I hope ain't nobody been abused, but you better fight back. Shit. But there you go. Um, <laughs> just what it is. We fight back around here, baby. So look, um, you got to say all of that to all of those agencies, but more importantly, it needs to go to your Department of Revenue. Your Department of Revenue is the one where we abandon our accounts after three years. That's where our funds go to. Our abandoned bank accounts after three years goes to our Department of Revenue. For you guys that know about the Lost Money website, where it says you can find your lost money, please understand if it's a public side to a website, it's a private side to a website. And so 
all of the bank accounts that we abandoned after three years, because they do stay open for three years, even though it may look closed on your side, it's not. <coughs> um, they are contracts, our promissory notes, or anything that we have signed after three years is considered abandoned, which is why after three years in most states, if you look at your state laws on debt collection, because most people only look at the federal laws, but if you look at your state laws on debt collection, most of them do after three years, they cannot legally collect. And that is why the account was abandoned. They sent the money to your state. The good thing about that is, is that when you send that information over to the Department of Revenue, you're going to attach a letter to it. I will give you guys an example of what the letter should look like. The words that need to be contained in it. I will provide you guys with an example of that. Now you're going to ask them for an accounting on the public and the private. <laughs> They're going to get you out of their system so damn fast. They're going to be like, hold up, wait a minute. Before you send that packet off, please make sure that you go down to your Department of Motor Vehicle office and get a copy of your motor vehicle report, MVR report. You want them to go back all the way to age 18 if they can, if you're in the same state. And FYI, just a little tip. And if you finance in a car right now and that DMV has a lien on it, when you get your MBR report all the way at the back of it, it's going to be your MCO title. I hope y'all read it. Now you got the highest title of your vehicle. And we can talk about what y'all can do with that later. It's inside of your motor vehicle report. Louis Perez, your eyes got big as hell. You like, wait a minute, what did she say? Yeah. For you guys that know what the MCO is, that is actually the highest level to your title. And it was sold to the DMV when you got the car so the DMV can be a part of the fraud. Because nobody has to lean on nothing, but that's another class. So make sure before you send that packet off, you order a copy of your motor vehicle report because that's technically your proof of claim. I like to go collect the bag from these people. That's your proof of claim. It's showing the fraud that they did and you're able to use that to drop an invoice and send it to them. Once you send that packet with a common law copyright notice with the USIC search in it, your... Um, recension of the driver's license and all of that good things. Now, no, do that mean you got to give up the physical license? What will happen? Because of course you need an ID. If you just got at the passport car, it will be put in a system as you are not an employee and that you're a private person. So it's not going to affect anything. If you have your CDLs, only use it during that time. Everybody else just resend your signature. I tell you everything that you can send to you can undo we can send it what make you think that we can't tell them no no longer that's like a rape almost tell them you tired of being raped you being raped and don't know it period once you send those documentations off to the department of revenue now you're in the state system which because of the National Driver Registry Act goes over to every system that you are now a living person, you are no longer a slave and they cannot touch you. Yes. Also, when you send that paperwork off to the Department of Motor Vehicle because you did the EIN number, they are going to now send you a tax exempt card that you can use in every store that you want. Now you don't pay any taxes any longer. You're only paying taxes now because you have a driver's license saying that you're a state employee. And they can impose those on you. Because Congress said that they are the only ones that can impose taxes. That's what they said, not me. So when you get yourself in proper status on your state level, you no longer pay taxes. Now, you already got yourself on status at the federal level, which does stop your taxes. It stops them. Then if you owe them, you don't own them. Because... It's the United States citizen that you keep saying you are that actually goes. Believe it or not, with all that you guys have heard, when I tell you that what I just told you guys is all you need to get your status on the record. That's all you need to get your status on the record. These people that stretched all the hell out, talk about do this, file this, take this, do this. 
why should it have to be hard to assert the rights that the creator gave to us, whoever your creator is? They gave us undeniable rights, saying the only thing we're supposed to do is help each other, love each other, don't kill each other, give to thy neighbor. The ties was really supposed to go to our neighbors and not no church house. Okay, it, it, it wasn't. And hopefully, if you know some Christians on the line, please do not get offended. Hell, I was a pastor's kid, but I was one of them pastor kids like, how that don't sound right. How he become a loving God and one and killing kids in the next, y'all got me messed up. But hey, it just didn't sound right. I want you guys to also understand that this is a spiritual process first. You got to get aligned with the spirit because what you don't understand is you have to put yourself back together. They call it the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Do you know that that is your minor you, your adult you, and your strong man you? You have to put that back together so that you can, one, become alive, and two, get out of minor status because a minor cannot speak. You know how, you know, you tell your kids and no, it's my way or no way. And that's what these people have been doing to us because all this time we thought we was damn grown. And until we had the age of majority on the worker, we got damn minors. When I found out that it was just as easy as I told you guys, just I kicked myself in the ass a couple of times. I even cried for a week and I ain't no crier. I'm a 313 10 toes down, maybe Detroiter. I cried for a week and said, you mean to tell me it was this easy? But when I sit back and I think about it, the 10 years that I put into it, the trial and the error, the affidavits, the learning and the reading, it has now put me in a position that I believe this. Like, I'm not, y'all can't see me, but I'm not looking at none of these laws on the screen. This is in me because I have made it be such. And now I am taking a war on misinformation against those that's on social media that is providing you guys with information that's not, as, that's not correct. At this point, I'm not going to even blame them too much that the information is not all the way correct because they only went so far. A person can only tell you how far they went. But if they only been reading for three months, baby, I'm going to tell you they ain't even scratched the surface because just you guys reading the SS5 form, look how long it took for us to really see that the answer was right on the page. You did just didn't know what you've been looking at. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to show you that they wrote the words. If y'all stick with me and I, we get to the point where I pull a security agreement that your bank wrote, you will see, believe it or not, on one of them pages in that security agreement in which it is that they signed, it says that it will cancel out all of our debt by March 31st of that following year. It says it on there. They agreed to do that. But you turned around and agreed to pay for something that's already paid. You also said that they can keep the proceeds, proceeds, so why you don't think you're getting your money from it? Go read the contracts that you guys have signed. People telling y'all to rescind y'all cars. Go read your contract. It tells you how to rescind it. It told you to put it in arbitration first. Believe it or not, arbitration puts you on a do not pay, do not collect status, but you didn't hear that from me, but yeah, you did then you ain't got to worry about paying it because if you have the foundation that you need to put on that arbitration paperwork, baby, they're going to be selling out, selling out faster than um, you can see. Quick, fast, in a hurry. But it's going to come with foundation and Title 15 USC 1690, goddamn two ain't going to do it. Period. Title 15, 1692 ain't even what y'all should be reading because I just told you guys this is not government. We're dealing with policies and privacy. We're dealing with the bank, which is the Uniform Commercial Code. I thought I muted everybody. Up. You're dealing with the Uniform Commercial Code. That's what you guys should be reading. You should be reading the Emergency Banking Act. They're not playing the Constitution that you think they are. You want to get where I'm at? Read the Emergency Banking Act. How are you trying to play a game and you don't know what game you're playing? Y'all didn't bought space the Uno. Now we around here draw four and reverse and draw four. And come on, reverse one more time too. And y'all bring a space. We're not, we're not dealing with that. We are dealing with the emergency banking app. You guys want to be your own beneficiaries. And let me tell y'all something. Y'all got people on this goddamn app telling y'all you can be your own trustee and you can but it's a certain way you got to do it. But they are telling you, yeah, I'm going to give you a trustee class and you're going to teach and you can be trustee for Sally, John, your neighbors, your cousin. Let me tell y'all something, don't do it. Because if you read the Trust and Denture Act, it'll tell you who the trustee can be and who they can't. And if they ain't got $150,000 worth of assets and an institutional trustee connected to them, which is the bank, what are y'all doing? 
Why go through a trustee company that's going to take nine months to a year to get you your money when you can actually go to the bank, get out of minor status with a certified copy of your birth certificate? Damn, I literally just gave y'all the answer. With a certified copy of your birth certificate, not even authenticated. With the proper trust, you'll get out of minor status. Then you can make them now fiduciary, and then now you can tell them what to do. Because Congress already said in 1967 on a congressional record that uh, we are the co-beneficiary, we're the co-trustees and the beneficiary. The beneficiaries, the only thing we're supposed to do is direct and have the enjoyment of every will, contract, and trust. That's their definition, not mine. But how are you going to be able to assert your rights if you don't know them? Your rights are found in the Trust and Denture Act of 1939. You want to know how to get these companies in trouble for robbing you? Go look at the agreement that they signed. You'll find that under the Security Exchange Act of 1932-1934. With the proper trust and out of minor status, believe it or not, you'll get access. The Treasury said, not Tamika. The Treasury said in order for you to get access to your sense of BK and your credits, it said you have to go through the bank, which is the middleman. So while everybody's sitting there to Janet Yellen, they laughing at you. Janet Yellen is not the bank. She's the title. She's holding a position. It's Wells Fargo, PNC, and Chase. Now y'all see why they trying to take my page? Because I told y'all it was the bank. Y'all thought I was bullshit. They not reacting to my page. I the billions of people on that goddamn app. Why me out of all people? Somebody that don't go live, ain't got nothing up there but some laws and some little words on it. But as soon as I got to stop dropping that ink word, I've been fighting for my pages ever since to get the information out to the people. Which is why, as y'all see, I'm a real person. Y'all can hear me. People don't see me much. Because I'm I'm beating court cases and I'm I'm showing people how to flip their switch on the fucking bank. Like they sunk a whole fucking Titanic because I will be nothing to them. But at the end of the day, this is my assignment and this is what I'm here for. And I'm on a war on misinformation. And it's a lot easier, guys, than what people are making it to believe. We have made this process hard. You don't need no damn affidavit. Y'all didn't hear me one time say file the affidavit fucking David. I say use all of their papers and all of their words because that is one thing that they cannot rebut. And what I told you guys from the searches that you got to do and those particular forms, that is the only things that you guys got to do to get your status on the record. That's it. No more. It will be recognized across the board through the governmental systems. Once you send that paperwork to the state system, now it's double. That's just being double because once the government put in the system, it's in there. But we know that these states, they are not a part of the United States. They're contracted states. So you have to do what you have to do on your contracted state level. And that's by using the apostille getting it recorded at the county recorder's office, getting put in the newspaper, and you are done. You are now free from that side of it. Now, the only other thing we got to do is go hit the bank, which ain't nothing but a couple of trusts and some FDIC forms and another little forms and know the foundation of how to go in there and talk like the bank. And then you'll be good. It took me almost, I've been at this 10 years, so it took me about, seven and a half, eight years before I figured it out. But it came from a lot of reading. It came a lot of, oh, they didn't answer. But then when I got to talking about them, talking like them, and I went into the bank, hell, they thought they was about to lose their job because they thought I was from the damn security exchange. The guy flat out asked, am I about to lose my job? Are you from the security exchange? I said, wouldn't you like to know, go ahead and, and, and do what you need to do and no ain't a goddamn answer. But see, I was able to do that because I knew every system that they used. I knew that they had custodial primary linked account connected to my account. I know that they got a primary account that's connected to the treasury.gov account. And I know that they're only getting away with it because we are minor and dead. And that's what Jane Doe and John Doe came from. And your account has your social security number, but it don't have your name because you ain't stood up and it's a Jane Doe. So security number without the dashes. And then it says John Doe. Well, Jane Doe, social security number with the dash is beneficiary inside of them, but I knew that, so I was able to go in there and say that, and I scared the hell out of them, and they did what I wanted. 
Now, if I went in there talking black law, they'd be like, oh, get that your ass up out of here. You still trying to figure it out? It's the bank, y'all. It's the bank. Chase, Wells, PNC, the credit unions. And as I said in the beginning of this call, if we don't fix this now, babies, we're going to go back to 1933. Do y'all think they're going to give that financial system up without, without a fight? But if you put yourself right, because people don't even know that you can remove the bank as being in the position that they is with one form is a 56F form. Get a trust account and do the 56F. It moves you to the private side of the bank. Period. That FDIC insurance, and they talk about if the bank is insured, it is for 250000 But they ain't tell you that's every individual account. And I'm going to tell y'all something for the new digital currency to run out, baby. That system got to go down. But now who you going to have in place as the beneficiary to get that 250000 from the FDIC because they ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. As long as that account say Jane Doe, John Doe, it won't be you. But it's sure going to be that big. So back to the basics. We got to go back all the way to the beginning. And in the process of you asserting your rights, you ain't got time for no police and no state and no none of that. So get out of their system. Well, not get out of their system, but get put in their system right. Because as of right now, every last one of you guys have chose acquiescence. You have been silent. Now it's time to raise our voices. It's time to put it on the record that we are the American Indians and everybody else. Y'all seen them on there. Talk about the bank. I don't know who watched that, that thing when Maxine... Waters was playing like she, you know, trying to help us and stuff, you know, and talking about, well, the banks got all the, the, the records of all the Indians. Why do you think they said the banks have it? Under the law, I told you guys earlier, number 67, they got a miscellaneous Indian trust account. Come on, guys. It's the bank. But they want you to think it's the treasury. They want you to think it's Janet Yellen. They putting us in every other rabbit hole outside of the one we need to be in. And then unfortunately, it's too late because when the lights go out and the system change over, there's going to be two classes of people, two, one, two. I tried to post it on social media. It wouldn't even load. So I will tell you guys, there's going to be two classes of people. The first class, they said, is going to be about 97% of the people. Those people will only be able to have $1,000 no more in their bank account. That $1,000 expires every 30 days. So if you only use $2 and you think you're going to hold on, no, they, they're swiping it out. You're going to have to get the death shot. You're going to have to get the boosters. For y'all that don't believe. What are they doing in California and Georgia right now? Got everybody, oh, did you get that $300? Y'all think they're giving money? They are testing it to see who dumbass is going to take it. Period. I know you might need it. Don't take it. Because if nobody complies, what can they do? If somebody put it up on the screen. Is that what I'm looking at, DeAndre? What's that? Is that the screen that show everything, the different classes of people? Somebody unmute DeAndre Taylor. DeAndre Taylor. I just yeah, this, this this is it right here, y'all. What Tiff, what Tamika is talking about. This there you is, go. This is the thing right here where it's talking about the status. There even is a restricted um, where if you get in trouble, they're gonna restrict your money from getting that thousand dollars that she's talking about. To yeah. now, you only get five hundred. So you're completely dependent on the fucking government. So this is the reason why we need to do the shit she's saying because if we don't, we're gonna. Well, I'm not gonna be, but you're I gonna need be in class. If you and don't do the shit she said. There you go. Can you send a copy of that to pastorfree.gmail.com? Yeah, I'll, I'll send it. Thank you. I'll send it in the email. And then do you guys see where it says sovereign? All these years, they talk about the sovereign movement. That's the sovereign people, the one that can have seven to eight million dollars in the account at one time, ain't got to get no vaccines, ain't got to listen. And they said only one percent of the people gonna be that. We have the ability to change that. We have the ability to change it, and we gotta do it for our kids. And you see it even said comment. It says common, which then you know that's common law. Which is why I told y'all to put yourself under common law. Putting yourself as a non-citizen national, even though on our side it says non-citizen national, on their computer it says sovereign. We don't want to be restricted in quarantine. Hell no, because I'm going down. Where I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, where I got the 50-round clip and I'm motherfucking ready. 
with the scope on it and the bulletproof vest. Let's go. Told y'all I'm front of the jury. I don't play that shit. I'm not going down and my kids not either. And I don't want y'all either. This is why I'm passionate about this. This is why I decided that I was not going to retire until I get y'all what y'all need. And even after I leave, ignorance be gone. To, um, Caleb, I'm pouring it onto him. And then he will be there to help you guys along the way. I ain't never going away all the way, but I'm tired. Y'all is big team. I'm tired. All my kids here all day is a law, but I had to do this for them. They know this. They, they out of the system. This is what they're preparing for. Why people talking about all them free stamps? Are they giving us this? And no. If you depend, think about it though. If you're de dependent on the government and they're only giving you $1,000 a month, they didn't raise the rental prices so high. Where are you going to live? Why do you think they're trying to buy up everything so you can be dependent upon them? But well, whether we realize it or not, the Department of Urban Development, who does Section 8, they left off a couple words off of that title every time they show it to us. It actually said the Department of um, Urban the Housing, Urban Development, and Indian Affairs. Because we on Indian land, and every last one of us is supposed to get Section 8. Every last one of our houses are getting Section 8. Yeah, they forgot to put the Indian Affairs part on it. So. Yeah, that's what it is. Those little forms, no affidavits, is all their forms, guys. Do it according to their way because they can never deny you. They have not expected us to read. This is all I do is read. I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to put all this information and make sure you guys get it. As a few things I'll add to it. I'll work on it as soon as I get off. And I will send you guys this book because I want to try to get started. Go ahead and get your search done. Get that paper back. It comes back email so you don't have to mail off to get your USIC search. But well, hurry up because I forgot the date. They just put a little thing on there saying they're about to stop doing it as e-file. You're going to have to mail it in. They know what they're doing because by that time, they're going to say too many people are knowing. And at that point, they, they can't hide the fact that we're not U.S. citizens. Ain't nobody higher than Department of Homeland Security, but Department of Homeland Security. And if you look on my page, I went through it. I have two videos on it that you can specifically see. I tell you to click other, what you type in, and I even posted the letter that they sent me. Right? I got it and back that, within a few days after I filed. And the letter is on my page as well, too. Um, mm -hmm. I did my back in August, which is ultimately why everybody doing them now. Um, I did mine back in August. It said the same thing on there as well. It shows I'm not a citizen. That's the most powerful piece I'm telling you guys. When I say that that's the most powerful is piece of paper that you guys are going to ever have in your life. Because that's going to stop everything. Taxes, court cases, that thing that he put up talking about you restricted in quarantine. They only going to be able to do that to those that um, say they are U.S. citizens and the ones that they call restricted. You remember I told y'all they coming from them state nationals. The restricted people going to be the state nationals because they're trying to overthrow the government and they, they, the antivirus rights ain't, ain't about to do nothing but steal y'all damn trust that y'all signed for. So if you on this call and you are were thinking about American state national, you have done paperwork for a state national, all I'm going to say is, is that if you go under Duns and Bradstreet and you look up your state, it says that your state is out of business. So what the hell you just pledged allegiance to? The state is out of business. Make you think about it. Now. <laughs> so. Do we got any questions? Because, yeah, it's that simple. <laughs> I promise y'all it's that simple. Dijon? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, going back to the UCC, uh, is it still good practice to um, sign everything UCC 1-308? I didn't know we talked about that. Okay. Oh, that okay. Um, 
the best way that I can. Okay, so what are you trying to sign? So give, give me an example of something that you're signing that you would use the UCC 1-308. Up, you're muted. I can't hear you. I don't even know where he went to. Then I don't even know where he went to. Wherever you went, could you raise your hand again for me? Okay. I can't find you. Oh, there we go. I found him. Dijon. Okay. Uh, okay. What I've done. Um, because I started with the Copper Moonshine. Um, so I've done my passport booklet like that. And any uh -huh. documents that I know that sit contracts, I've been doing that for the last three years, I want to say. Have you seen any difference in the documents that you sent by signing at UCC 1-308? Nope. No. Okay. So when it comes to contracts, we're not supposed to sign. We're supposed to endorse them like a check on the back because it's a check. Copy that. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And then any other, anything else that you sign, make sure you use the word buy. Okay, not just that. Inside of the ebook, there is going to be a stamp that you guys can order because this is the same thing they do. It has a signature. It says buy where you physically write your signature there, but it says all rights reserved above it. And then you will put agent for or beneficiary under and just keep the stamp with you start stamping everything. Okay. And that's how you use your signature. Okay. Because Thanks. what that did was that observed your rights. Okay. You got all rights reserved and it's the difference between a signature and an autograph. So you're going to definitely put the word buy in front of it. Okay. Right. So start signing that way. Okay. Thank you. Again. Okay. You're welcome. You'll be signing as the trustee. <laughs> for the beneficiary or as the beneficiary okay but I, right. that step is going to be in the book i survived every last one of y'all to order it um i have one on my page where they countersign a mortgage note if y'all look at that it's on one of my pages y'all better go look real quick but um how they countersign the note we do what they do period and if you're smart after you get that ein number see what i will personally do and this is what i have done when I made my all caps name an LLC, I did it in the day of, of Delaware. Why Delaware? Delaware is a private state. No Delaware consumer laws is the shit. Not just that. Every corporation, if y'all been looking them up, you will see that their parent company is in Delaware. You know why? They register in Delaware, then the state that they actually hold their principal address in is now considered a foreign limited liability company, guys. We are foreign to the United States. So I registered my LLC originally in Delaware, private state, got a registered agent the whole nine yards. Then in my current state, I registered myself as a foreign limited liability company. I play the same games they play. I keep telling y'all, it ain't about trying to beat this system, let's join it. And then I go right in the banks and everywhere they owes, get foreign limited liability, foreign funding, international funding, which is so much more. And then I, I sign it off and discharge it. By the way, did I sign it? You got to learn how to play the game. We can't beat this game. Don't try to beat them. All these people talk about give up your social, give up your birth certificate, shit. That's your money. Learn how to control it. Okay? Learn how to control it. All right, Jamie. Hey, um, I guess my question is, how can I, where can I direct people to buy this ebook if if it's even possible to do it? Because I, I don't want to share it. Obviously, it's your intellectual property, and I want to respect that. Uh, this is a, a really helpful thing that you're doing here and I really appreciate it. I respect it. So where can I like direct people to, to do that? So ultimately what, what I was supposed to do is this video was going to actually be a replay. Um, but I understand that people need to be able to physically see something in that I wasn't going to drop the ebook until later on, but because of the fact that y'all see that I cannot share my screen, but other people can, it's crazy. Um, 
this is it'll be a link in my bio and I'll the, the ebook. Then they'll just be able to go to either my bio or Ignorance Be Gone bio or Beautiful Azure bio, and they'll be able to be able to purchase the ebook. Um, but you guys are going to get the ebook because I was not able to share my screen, which I do not like. But I'm gonna tell y'all every time I do a really, really, really important live, this is how I know Zoom is messing with me as well. I didn't got kicked off a of Teachable. I didn't got kicked out of Google Workspace. They, I didn't got kicked out of a lot of places. Because of the information that is being contained, um, but it, it will be a link in the bio. And I am, if you guys would like, I would run a series for you guys, um, show you how to get your bills on a do not pay, do not delete stat, do not collect status, how to properly do an arbitration if you're going to do a recension. Cause I'm telling y'all now, and I don't care about no name dropping and y'all can go tell it because I don't give a hell. You know what I'm saying? That, that city girl, Tyler from Detroit, she's getting people cars repossessed with that damn recession packet. People is getting people messed up because they're not doing it properly, you know? Um, and I don't mind showing the proper way for you guys to be able to do it. But if you're trying any of these coupon things, I promise you, if you turn your credit card bill around, it talks about billing error status. And it says that they, they cannot retaliate against you is on the back of credit one bill is on the back of capital one bill is inside of t-mobile verizon t-mobile verizon actually have arbitrary uh, arbitration clauses in their things as soon as you start that arbitration guys it puts your bill and don't pay don't collect as long as that black ink and white paper have the appropriate UCC code to show the fraud in there that no pay, no collect status will turn and you never have to pay that bill and you getting your money back. I'm trying to tell y'all, I live this life. I'm not playing with y'all. I ain't playing with y'all. Like, and that's how you do it for real. It ain't sending them all that crap, putting all these codes. No, they already told you what to do. Even in the arbitration agreement, it tells you where to send it. it tell you where to send it. Awesome. Thanks. Thank You're you. Welcome. All right, Danielle. Danielle, thank you for turning your camera on. Um, I'm, I'm clicking people that got their cameras on. <laughs> Did, can you unmute or no? No. Are you, are you trying to unmute, babe? There you oh, go. There you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Absolutely. So I have a question. So I was born in Moldova and I was naturalized here in California. So I use the naturalization, same thing as a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I just put white, right? I yes. Put okay. And but then uh, my, my question is when you look at the definition of American yeah, Indian, so yeah, if, if it fits you, but y'all got, I right. want y'all to remember we're on American right. Indian land. All of America used to be Turtle Island. It used to be all of America Indian land. So I don't care where you were born, as long as you weren't born on space, as <laughs> long as you weren't born in space, yeah, you 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 apply up under that. Okay. Oh, just why? Can I say something, sister, right quick? Go ahead. Okay, so just to piggyback on what she said about the American Indian land, that everybody's on Indian land. Um, and I'm not trying to tell my business, but I'm going to just say this quick little thing. I received Section 8. And everything, you think that is through HUD, but when you look, you have to go through the Indian Public Housing and Affairs, and that's who Section 8 is through. So she's right. Everything is on Indian land. <laughs> yeah. And you have to remember, too, that the United States made us responsible for the public debt. Do y'all know how they were able to do that? Anybody? No, I just had one more okay. question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and then the, the money they sent in their bank, the $350 and $1,000 like in 2020, do we have to leave it in the bank or once we do the whole thing, it'll be fine? Ain't no money gonna be in no bank no more. That green money that y'all got. Oh, that, that stuff gonna be able to be in the middle of the street and you're gonna walk past it like it's a dirty napkin. Yeah, well, and if y'all yeah. and if you're smart, listen to me, y'all better go get some XRP. XRP is going to be the new digital dollar, but y'all didn't hear that for me, but y'all did hear that for me. And get it now while it's like 40 some cent. 
because by the end of the year to be 70 some dollars, they are in talks. I, I watch the security exchange. I watch all of that and it's going to be XRP guys. That's why they are in court with the security exchange now. You only can buy it on the Uphold app. That's why people think that you can't buy it, but you can get it on the Uphold app. Um, actually, my son is into trading and he's only 16, but that's that's my little mama, get this, get that. And he ain't failed mama yet. So there it is. Get y'all some XRP and do y'all some compound interest. If y'all got 401ks, I'm telling you now, don't say I didn't warn you. If you have a 401k, you better find you an insurance person ASAP, like today, tomorrow, and switch it out to a universal index life insurance plan. Regardless of the market, you won't lose. You just made yourself the bank. And um, it collects interest, compound interest. If anybody know about compound interest, it's a beautiful thing. And um, more importantly, when you get into that banking book, you will know that you can actually take an international bill of exchange and create it properly and fund your universal index life insurance policy for millions of dollars and make yourself a bank. But you ain't hear that from me. Uh, lastly, so the naturalization card, where do I certify that, my naturalization? Um, so when you do the citizenship search, you're going to select the I-94, okay? I you're going to select it the same way um, where you're going to do the citizenship search. And believe it or not, it's going to come back that you're not nationalized. I want you to make sure that you send me that um, so that you can see it yourself. Like you're in, you're here legally. But the way that they said you are, it was just to trick you and you're not. So you're able to do every, the same thing that we're doing instead of using the birth certificate. Um, if you get to that step where you can go into the bank and sell it, you will use your nationalization document. But to be as a free man as you are, um, when you get that search back and you put everything on the record, then you will be in the sovereign class. So I don't okay? have to certify that. No, you don't have to certify that. And then when I was doing the FOIA, it asked for an A number. It says optional, so I don't have to put that either, huh? No, you don't have to do that. So just select the I-94 and then select other. other. Okay. Yep, and then write in any um, you want the citizenship status for and then put the variations of the name. And it'll also be outlined in the book. Like on the book, it literally will say it says step one, step two, step three. I don't need nothing for the imagination. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You are more than welcome. It's my pleasure. That was it. Okay. Who we got next? Is oh, I'm sorry. We're gonna choose legacy. I thought I was muted. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad um, to be here. I'm a big fan of all of you guys. I'm I'm always on um, TikTok saying Thank stuff. Thank you. Y'all know who I am. Yes, I do. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing really good. I'm, and again, I'm honored. I'm a big fan of yours and Ignorance Be Gone and um, your whole team. Thank so you. Uh, this information has been like, you were talking about how like it changes you and blows your mind. I've been, oh my God, I can't even articulate um, how this is impacting me and like my um, mental well-being and everything. So I'm just really trying to get free. Um, okay like you were saying spiritually get free that's why I asked all those questions and stuff so I'm glad that you guys are here to kind of like you know walk us through it so my question is you dropped something like real dope a little bit ago universal bill of exchange international like international. Uh, international bill of exchange that's that's money huh that's or that's it, like it, 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 <laughs> the highest level <laughs> of a security you can ever have in your life baby yes it is so you you kind of ran through that um and um so i put a note here real quick uh can you just go through that again one more time so uh, international bill of exchange guys is the highest level of a security okay, okay. um I would definitely pull the International Exchange Act and I will read it okay. first because y'all know I'm big on foundation. Yes, ma'am. And then I will pull up an example of what an international bill of exchange needs to look like. It needs to be a UNICAL, which is spelled U-N-I-C-T-A-L, International Bill of Exchange. You need to make sure that it's negotiable. And believe it or not, if y'all got car notes, see, I don't do recensions. 
I pay them the only way the government said I can pay because I've already signed the contract and agreed to it. I said I understood it. I'm not about to go back and forth talking about no damn recension. I'm going to pay you the way the government said. So I know I can't pay you with the debt note because that's paying the debt with a debt, which is why the national debt average is what it is because we keep using green money and it has no value. But I do know that if I have a mortgage or if I have a car note, and I do know if I create an international bill of exchange and I send it to their trustee, you might get a deed and a title in the mail. But you didn't get that from me, but you got that from me. And there you go. See that? Whoa. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is you mentioned the 401k. Um, th those need to go into those universal life insurance policies. I reached out to um, a Instagram um, indigenous Aboriginal melanated young fella. He seemed very sharp. And I asked him, I roll over my 401ks um, without the penalties and stuff. And he had indicated that that's not possible, but you just said we need there, to put those in there. there. Now, when you're rolling your 401k over, to a universal index life insurance, there is no penalty. Okay. And any agent that you talk to will tell you that. Now, if you cash it out, there's a penalty. Okay. But now if you're in the correct status on the federal level, there will be no penalty because you know the penalty only becomes because you're a US citizen. Getting out of that US status has changes everything. But People have worked too hard for their 401ks to lose it because of the market. Y'all remember 2008? Y'all lost it, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And believe it or not, that 2008 housing crisis, they put the shadow over the fact that so many people lost their houses and y'all can fact check me on this. What they actually found out was that the banks were doing the fraudulent mortgages because they were already paid for and they were still in our securities. So actually some bankers went to jail. That was the housing crisis of 2008. For example, why do you guys think for you guys that know um, Biden the clone and actually his twin brother um, signed into law the um, student loan forgiveness? And did you guys just see that the feds just stopped it? Well, I've been reading the paperwork, though. Y'all know why they stopped it? Because the Fed said, wait a minute, hold up. Y'all already discharged all of these loans. So what are y'all talking about? That is why the heart is there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that the, so the 401k, um, not rollover, I won't call it that, um, putting it into a life insurance policy, that won't be a taxable event if I get my status. No, it will. No, it, and it won't. No, it will not. And it will not be a taxable event if you're moving it over to a universal index life insurance. And a universal index life insurance is tax free. You just made yourself a bank. So you can actually borrow it from yourself. If you don't pay it back, you're just not paying yourself back. And it doesn't have any effect on your death benefit. Got you. So that brother yeah. just probably didn't know what know that. Correct. And then you have to look at the term life insurance, guys. Life insurance is for your living. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's for you to use right now to make yourself a bank. Ms. Tamika, I got one more question and then I'll mm -hmm. move on. Um, so in order, you mentioned the registered stuff earlier. Um, are we to take the little skinny sticker on the registered sticker and put it on the actual document and then use the other one on the envelope when we're sending these things registered? Okay, so let me explain about the registered mail. Because registered mail is important because of chain of custody. The reason you may get an issue with your post office giving you that copy, giving you those stickers, is because technically and lawfully, that postal person is supposed to be the first chain of custody contact. So if they didn't put the sticker on there, they cannot certify it, guys. They letting y'all walk in there with them red and white stickers on that paperwork, and it is not certified. They're going to say that you closed it. You just broke chain of custody. They don't know what's in there now. And it's not going to be effective. So what you do is you take a blue ink pen with you. You do not seal the envelope yet. When you go to do your registered mail, say, hey, can you give me the registered mail number? Because I need to write it on my document. You write it on your document. You put it in. You do not seal the document. You give it to the postal person. They will sell it. They will put the stamp on it. That is your first chain of custody. Now your doc, 
document is protected. You now have a registered bond. Same way y'all do y'all coupons. It says that the coupon has to be a registered coupon. I don't want to see no more for nobody on this live about no septic for goddamn value, okay, y'all? That's not what it said. <laughs> it didn't say a septic for value with no stamp. I wasn't going to laugh, money. but Kimberly bust out laughing, so I'm sorry. <laughs> y'all want to know what it really, really Y'all want to know what it really said? And y'all can fact check me. It's, it didn't say nothing about no 45 degree angle either. <laughs> It said that it's supposed to be a half inch down on the left hand side, four inches wide. And it needs to say, pay out to the United States Treasury, blah, 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 something. And then you're supposed to put the corresponding bank that it goes to. Guys, every corporation has a bank standing behind it, which is the trustee, which is why Congress said any card is a credit card because they're backed all by banks. Find out who they trustee is, put that bank name in there and send it. Y'all will never have any problem with y'all coupon again until y'all ready to sell it to the dang on bank and then y'all just get the money off of it, okay? Please don't do no more acceptable value. I told y'all it's a war on misinformation and I'm going to win this war. All right. So I'm going to, we're going to limit every, because there's 227 people on here. So we're going to limit everybody's questions to one question. Okay. Because I do try to answer everybody's questions. Yeah, she tried to, but we're going to. When I couldn't share my screen. So I'm kind of mad. So I got to try to make sure that I compensate you guys in some type of way because I like to try to do everything in excellence. So I will try to attempt to answer everybody's questions. So yes, please leave it down to one. That would be perfect. Thank one you. question. If it's over one question, I will mute you. Don. And she ain't playing either. <laughs> hi thank you so much for this um you're welcome i, I talked to you a, a couple times on tiktok and i ask you um i'm canadian so and i'm mine is a little bit different because i was born in canada moved back here adopted in canada and then moved back here so I have a Canadian birth certificate, mm -hmm. obviously in two names because they changed my name and I have a social insurance card there and I have a social security card here and a U.S. citizen passport. Okay. Wow. So the good thing about that is that um, Canada actually went into a deal with the United States and the United States Treasury. So you're treated no different than we are. The good thing about it is now you get double for everything that you got. So when you do your affidavit of ownership, because your mm -hmm. name was changed, that original birth certificate still had your name on it. Right. So you can do the affidavit of ownership that that is you, which you will, which you having both of them and having all of the documentation, you just added to it. So basically you just get double for everything. But yes, Canada actually did go into a um, agreement with the United States Treasury. And actually one of the main banks that they are stealing from us from is in Canada. That's why I tell people, watch what they're doing in Canada first, because whatever's happening over there is coming to us. Watch what they're doing in China. If you notice, China started backing their money back by gold again. If I was y'all, I would get some gold and silver, some dust, some minerals, go get some earth or something. Because in a minute, if you ain't gonna be able to barter, you're gonna be hungry. I'm telling you now, you're gonna be hungry as hell. So do I, so I certify the birth certificate I have now, because this is the other thing I've done. I've contacted post adoption services in Canada and they are certifying my birth record right now. Okay. So once you get the certified birth record back, you will go, um, and I, and I'm going to do this just in case I get some other Canadian, um, residents, I, I'm sorry, y'all. It's a spaceship going across the sky. I'm sitting outside. Anybody know me know I love to sit outside. It's literally a spaceship going across the sky, y'all. I ain't crazy, but it is. I'm looking at it. But anyway, it shocked me. It literally stopped me in my damn tracks. Lord have mercy. Okay, so you will go down to wherever you guys in Canada, you're going to get that certification signature authenticated. The same so I way. need to go to Canada. Oh, you're not in Canada any longer. No, I live in the States. I've lived here full time since I was 18. Okay. Do me a favor. I'm going to have to do just a little bit of um, extra legwork so I can find out because no, you don't have to go to Canada. There is a way for you to order it and you, it comes back to you authenticated. Um, guys, for anybody that needs to know, if you are in a different state, like when I did my authentications, I was in North Carolina. I'm originally from Michigan. 
So I was close to Canada. I was in Canada all the time. So I, when I did my authentications, when you go under vital check, they're going to ask you why you want it. If you put authentications and passport, it will already come to you authenticated where you do not have to go to your own state. Yes, did it cost me more than $12? It did. It cost me $72. But that was way cheaper than me either getting on a plane or driving it 12 hours away to go get something authenticated. It already came back to me authenticated on the state level. It can be done for every state. I'll do just a little bit extra legwork for you to find out exactly where it needs to go in Canada, send an email to pathoffreedom at gmail.com. Give me about 24 to 48 hours. I'll have that answer for you. And that will be something that I will add additional to the ebook, just in case someone else need that, you will have that information to be able to pass along to. I appreciate you because that's the one part I've been stuck on. Yeah. And then I'll make sure that I send you the treaty because I'm I'm big on treaties and acts, guys. That's all I use. I don't use USCs. I use treaties and acts because those are what stick. Um, I will actually send you the treaty that Canada did with the United States to be trading our birth certificates. That will be wonderful for you to have as foundation when you're doing what you're doing, because now you have something to stand on. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly. Hi, thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, and sorry, it just caught me off guard when Pat said she don't want to see no A for B. I fell out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because when you read the laws, of course, it's there. But um, my question specifically was about um, that private mailbox and how to obtain that. Um, because, of course, I've seen the brackets, but there's nothing in the law to support that to take you out of the jurisdiction. So how do you mm -hmm. go about doing that? So in the ebook there is an actual a private agent form that comes from the post office y'all when i tell y'all they give us everything so there's a private agent form that is included in the ebook um any form that i put in the ebook there is an example of how you are to fill it out i don't like to make people guess right because guessing will make you mess up so it will have how to fill it out. That is one way if you still want to get your mail to come directly to your house. If not, get you a private P.O. box either through iPostal 1, UPS, or FedEx, okay? That is how you do it. That stops the mail from coming to your house because technically the post office is committing fraud because on every last one of the statements that you guys receive, under, I believe it's under 31 USC 3125, it states that there's supposed to be a disclosure on the front of every statement that says, word for word, verbatim, this is a solicitation. You are not obligated to contract. And technically, according to the law, as soon as the post office see it, they're supposed to throw it away. That is why they went to paperless billing guide and because they try to say no goddamn trees, okay? Mm -hmm. They were committing mail fraud. So you either do the private form, agent form that will be inside of the book that you guys will get, or you go get you a postal box at FedEx or UPS, and then transfer all your mail. I like to stay out of their information and out of their systems. So I actually did mine as um, the private mailing of under my foreign um, EIN number, or you can use UPS or FedEx, and that will be in the book on the both way, on all three ways that you can use. If you use the private mailbox, there will be an example of the form and how it should be filled out for you to turn it in. And you, when you go to turn that in, you will turn it in directly to your uh, your postal service. And unfortunately, they don't have that form online. They know what they're doing. So when it's time for you to fill out that form, you have to go directly into the post office and ask for it, but at least you will know the exact form that you need to ask for by form number so they're not looking at you crazy. I ain't gonna never have y'all out here looking crazy because if y'all looking crazy, you're gonna be like that path of freedom shit. Not me, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Denise Hill. Okay, hi. Um, I'm sorry, I do have two questions. The white yeah, and, the, and the Native American, it says origins. Does that mean our ancestors? Or is that, that is that... correct. That's correct. Okay, so because my ancestors are Italian and that would apply to me for the white. Right. So if I check, 
if I check the Native American, I mean, do they follow up or can we check both or? Now the thing is, none of us know if we really have Native American in our blood. So I'm gonna do y'all one better, okay? All of the nations know who we are by last name. So I did check mine. I know that on my dad's side that my dad's grandmother which would be my great great grandmother lineage lineage is actually the 13th granddaughter of Pocahontas, which makes me Pamunkey on my dad's side. I know on my mom's side, which their my their family is from um, Louisiana, I'm Blackfoot Cherokee. There is a way for us to check this, guys. They have all of our names in a book. I will put it in the book for you guys to be able to check it. For the Indian reservation to run your last name, and they charge you $100. Once you get the paper, you see your name, they will give you all of your documentation showing your Indian heritage. There it is. They got it all in the record by our last name. So if you got anybody in your last name that's close to your lineage and they name Brown, I'm going to tell you right now, just like Chris Brown, that's how he got out of the Rihanna thing, y'all. He went found his lineages, had the Pamunkies do their stuff. Because when they do it, they give you a, a um, I think it's a $30 million bond. So that if anybody, like the states, the police or anybody trying to get you, they got to pay the reservation that bond amount before they can even do anything to you. But the records are there. It is based off of the last name. Um, and I will put that in the book, how you guys are able to go online and do the paperwork, and they will let you know exactly where you fit under the nationality of the American Indian, because we have to remember all of this land. They came up with these Italian and this and that, and I'm going to tell y'all to fact check me, because I like when y'all fact check me, right? Because that means that y'all had to learn something, because you had to go look for what I said. If you go on their Census Bureau website, man, I'll tell y'all, they tell us everything. And you look up under nationalities, you know what you're not going to see? You ain't going to see white. You ain't going to see black. You ain't going to see Italian. You ain't going to see African-American. You're going to see European and all the European tribes. Then you're going to see American Indian and all of the American Indian tribes. Those are the only things that you're going to see that fit the qualifications and classifications as a nationality. When I tell y'all, they tell us everything. Everything like everybody who got forced to take that shot. If you go up under the CDC website, they have a whole portion of exempt states. I know that's right because I hell we're gonna tumble about that one. I'm not getting it. I walked away 21 years as a nurse because I refused. After 14 of my patients died after getting that shot, I walked the hell away. I said, Not today or tomorrow, I will not be a part of it. But they tell us everything, so yeah, I'll make sure that that is included in it. But go ahead, you, you go ahead. Who me? No, she needs to ask one more question. She fine. She can ask it. I don't know what she went to. Um, I don't know where she went either. Just raise your hand again, and we'll get back to you. Now I have about questions. I try to answer everybody's questions. Right. Okay, okay. You can go to the next person. All right, Tiffany Edwards. One question, y'all. One question. Hey, thank you for uh, answering my question. I wanted to know if you could go over the process for doing the LLC in Delaware again. Okay, absolutely. So the first thing that you want to do, now I, you have two ways you can do this. You can go on and get your EIN number from irs.gov. Now, when you, you register in the state of Delaware, you have to have a register agent because it's a private state. I personally use a service called Northwest Register Agent. They do everything. They do my article of corporation documents. They do a lot. Now, depending on the state, there is a state fee. But when you go under and use Northwest, it was like $65 for them to do all of my stuff. I already had my EIN number. And I think I paid them $45 a month to be my register agent. But they did all of my article incorporations um, because you have to have a registered agent in that state. They do all your paperwork for you so you cannot make no mistake. And then they email it to you. And there you go. Once you get those article of incorporation documents, if you decide to want to 
um, in your own state be a foreign limited liability company? Let me explain that. Most people think because it says foreign, that means it's in another country. No, it means that if I open up a business in Atlanta and then I open up that same business in California, guess what? Atlanta is the parent state. California is the foreign state. It's about the different of where it's opened at. And if y'all was smart, please turn yourself into a foreign limited liability company. Right now, the state of California has it where you can set up any LLC free until June 30, I think it's June 30th of 2023. So use that if you're low on phones, do it in California. All right. Carusa. Carusa. Go back to our, did, did that answer your question all the way? If it didn't, just put your hand back up. I like to make sure you get, you have a full understanding. But yeah, Northwest Register Agent, if you're going to do it yourself, you got to go on their website and do the paperwork. I'm going to tell you that article incorporation stuff, that stuff is a lot. I let them do it because they provided me with my seal. I don't sign my signature. If it's my trust, my trust seal do it. If it's my business, my business seal do it. And when I tell you Northwest will do all of that and ship it to you, do your book and everything, I love them. They've never given me an issue. And for $45 a month to stop me from having to do it, hell, they can have it. Because you have to have that register agent in place or you will be found in default. All right. Carissa, Carissa. Bay. Oh, it's Karen. It's Karenissa. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Karenissa. Oh, that's pretty. Karenissa. Hey, Karenissa. Hey, I got an appointment with you on Monday. I hope you're ready. You. Mm -hmm. I'm always ready. Yes, Look, I'm do. always ready. I believe this stuff. <laughs> it's in my blood, baby. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so I have just one question. So I have a, my state ID. Um, I put all rights reserved and then my signature. Is that the same as the UCC or the UCC 1-308? Actually, it gives you a little bit more protection because remember, as I said, as they kind of started, I know they put all rights reserved. But even with the state ID, they still have you as a state employee. Okay, that's where the contract mm -hmm. comes in at because you're saying that you work for the state. So what I have is I have an international driver's license because all of that, I'm free and you're going to pull me out of my car shit, not today mm -hmm. or tomorrow, okay? So I just get out of the jurisdiction. So you can do that with the international driver's license. If you don't want to go that route, get the passport card. The way that we're going to, the way that I told you guys to fill it out, it will be step-by-step step in the book again for you guys' remembrance as well. Um, do the passport card that will pass the real ID. How they get people is they say, you need the booklet so you can get them pretty little stamps on it internationally. No disrespect to nobody, but half the people don't even leave their damn state. Where y'all going internationally? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving it a read. So yeah, you when you turn in and you do your recension, if you want to keep it, then there will be a particular way to word it so that you can still keep it for identification purposes, but not have it to the point that you're still considered a slave. And that will be described in the book as well. Okay. I rescinded my driver's license already. It was How like did you uh, rescind it. I just went to the DMV and filled out their little form and gave it to them. Yeah, and it, you still, yeah, that's a trick. They're going to make you think that it's done. You got to send that recension to their parent company, which is the Department of Revenue. And you have mm -hmm. to send it to the Department of Transportation. Now, under the National State um, Drivers Registry Act and under the Highway Public Safety Act, this act says this word for word verbatim. I'll say the acts again. Highway Public Safety Act, National Driver Registry Act states that when a private citizen, hint, hint, that dang on United States search, when a private citizen requests a private tag, they are to give it to them. There you go. Okay. You said Department of Revenue and what else? The Department of Revenue, the head person of the DMV. Okay the head person of the DOT, Department of Transportation. When you guys are addressing your envelopes, you have to find those people who are in that position and you have to put, if it's for the Department of Transportation, let's say it's New York, 
you'll put New York Department of Transportation in care of that person's name. The law says that if you don't address it to a particular person, they don't have to read it and they don't have to acknowledge it. That's why a lot of people documents are not getting any responses because you just sent it to anywhere. It's not sent to a direct person. And by sending it to that direct person, you cannot hold that direct person liable. Okay. Did you need anything other than a state driver's license to get your international driver's license? You actually don't need a state driver's license. You can put all zeros in that box and they'll still give it to you. Okay. And just make sure that you're on the right, the right website. Do not use the one for AAA. You're going to use the one, uh, I believe it's ita.org. If not, it's on the Ignorance Be Gone page. That when it says that you need a domestic license, the domestic license is actually the plastic license that they give you because we're not doing anything domestically. Everything we do is international. So the domestic license is the actual one that they give you. It also puts you in proper status. Now, if you go to get this international license and on there, it, you have to put your address other than for mailing purposes, that's not correct. Because remember that we said that puts you back in federal jurisdiction. When you get the right one, it comes with the card, and the booklet, the booklet has your number on there. The card will never have your address on there. And it will say, um, it'll have your name and proper status. If you decide to get the world passport the same way, also in the booklet that you guys will receive, it will break down how to apply properly for the world passport. I have not had any issues using my world passport, but it could be that because on all sides, I am considered in their system as a private individual as well as with the bank. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. And I see, I talk to you Monday. All right. No, Luna, no. Yeah. Um, I just had a question with uh, being born in Mexico. I have my birth certificate, but I'm not planning on traveling to Mexico anytime soon to get it like, uh, what is it, official? Authenticated? Uh, yeah, authenticated, but I do have a citizenship uh, when I, I became a citizen with the United States. Uh, would that work instead of my birth certificate then? So no, for anybody that was not born on what they consider U.S. soil, and for your authentications, you do not have to go back to your um, original place of domicile. Just go to your U.S. embassy and they'll authenticate it for you. Okay, because um, I'm, I'm currently in California. Well, I reside in California for most of my life. And um, so then I would just have to go to the embassy here in, Cal in uh, the city they live in? That is correct. You can go to the, because the embassies are the same across the board, you can go to the embassy in the state that you live in and they will authenticate and I apostille your documents for it. Yes, they will. Okay. And so that's the way I would do the whole process with just going through the embassy. And that is correct. When it comes to getting the authentication on that particular level, yes, you'll go through your embassy. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, and that goes for anybody. If this is not um, United States, as they say, your original origin, you would just have to go to your embassy to get um, the authentication done. All right. Alicia Boza. Hi, I'd like to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. God bless you for your beautiful ministry that you have here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. So my question is, out of, out of ignorance, I signed up with the state national website. I didn't do any paperwork. I just signed their agreement and I emailed them to rescind. Is there anything else that I need to do? No, I would make sure that I put it in writing as well. Okay. Make sure that you send it um, with them. It doesn't have to be registered mail because I ain't no damn body. Um, as long as you send it in trackable mail to show that it is tracked, um, you'll okay. be fine with that. And you yeah, did it's just a good. membership application. Like I didn't do anything else. I just signed their membership now, application. The only reason why I will tell you to even resend the application, because the definition of an application <laughs> under the financial terms of it is to fund an account. So any application that you feel out, whether they whether they want to 
um, deny you or not because applications can be, excuse me, guys, I got a car going down the street. Okay. Um, because the application can be transferred to a third party, it does make it a actual security. So they're able to use that. Um, when it comes to the state nationals, because Anne of Ron writes, and you can go look this up, she has filed so many UCC liens on all of the American people assets. She has made herself a fiduciary. I don't know who told her she can be over all the American people. And every last one of our bank accounts, the land, go look it up. Go look in Arizona, do a UCC one um, search under Anna Von Wright's name and you guys will find them. This is how I knew that she was full of crap. Okay. The only thing that she could not put a lien on was anything dealing with any foreign trusts or any foreign accounts. Now y'all see why I say get foreign. Um, but for everyone who has signed up totally with her, she's already put the lien on your birth certificate, your signature just solidified it. And now they about to get Anna Von Wright's welfare 2.0. This is this is Concordia. I don't know if this is the same thing. It's the thing with um, it's a state national um, website. It's called um, it's with the it's videos. It's, it's like a university state national dot us. Is that the same thing? Yeah, they're all, they're all the same thing. That dot us. Any you can get a, a website with us at the end. That is to trick you. Anything dealing with the United States government is going to always have a dot gov behind it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. Anna Von Rice worked for the Pope. It says it in her book. She worked for the Pope. Great. Okay, so there's no address on here, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to just email them. Yeah, just email them. There should, or and you can also send it because you had to go through the um, the assembly in your state, correct? I didn't do any of that. I just signed their membership, like their membership page. That's all I did. I didn't do. I didn't file anything. I didn't do anything. Nothing. I just. I just watched two videos. That was it. Okay. You should be okay. Um, if and you I sent them a recension. Them and I rescinded. I said, I rescind this membership. And then I just sent okay. them an email. So that's, that should be Perfect. good. Perfect. Yes. And you didn't send them your birth certificate, right? No. God damn, Okay, you good. <laughs> you I just good. watched two videos. That's all I did and took notes. That was it. Okay. You didn't get that ID that they tricking people with because it say do not detain. Okay, you no, good. No, nothing. I just signed their membership agreement and I just rescinded it and they said I can terminate it anytime. Yes, you're fine. You're absolutely Jesus. fine. Oh, yeah, yes, that is good, you. Annie. You're welcome. Yes, all the time. All the time. Thank you. Oh, you're thank welcome. You. From the bottom of my... Oh, sorry. I thought she was done. Yeah, I read her lips, though, to the front and bottom okay. of my heart. <laughs> And, I, and, for I my, and for my and for my children, for my FCM. absolutely, because this is what I, I do this for, guys. My children, one just walking out the door now because he's spoiled. Yes, son. And she's so calm. I just want to um say that oh, she's so calm. I like her energy. It's like peace, just a little bit. <laughs> it's peaceful. <laughs> just a little bit. I'll be done with my class in just a minute. Okay. Thank you, Alicia. Okay. Your next question, please. All right, Natasha Lee. Hello, hello, you guys. So I wanted to um, ask all the um, steps that we do for ourselves, am I able to do it on behalf of my kids? Um, and do I have to notify their school of the ethnicity change since I got that, um, since they sent me a letter about the truancy court? So can oh, I do yeah. this on behalf? So I will let beautiful Azra answer that for you because she just actually changed the enrollment of her children okay. and she put American Indian sister. Would you like to tell her your, your dealings with that and how that worked out for you? Um, so I just moved here and I enrolled my children in school and last year, of course I put black on the paperwork. Um, but this year at this new school, I have put American Indian and check white. And so they called me and they were like, um, last year you put black you know and I was like okay she said well what changed I said um nothing changed you know I just know who I am and so she was like well black is what you put last year are you sure I said yeah and it's noted with the department of commerce so I mean not the department of commerce oh um, yeah I think that's what I said but yeah it's noted with them and so department the of personnel. yeah well yeah, yeah. And so she ain't said nothing else. So it is what it is. But there they, you go. They can't say nothing. Okay. So and if, I'm, and, and if I was you, that's okay, baby. If, if, and if I was you, because you still have your children into their school, I will write up. Now, this is when I would do an affidavit. 
Okay. I will write up an affidavit with only stating the legal responsibility that you give them because people don't know when you sign your kids up for these schools, you're giving them legal yeah. authority for the first seven hours. Yeah. And I'm going to really be honest with y'all. The school is to keep us on the same cycle of indoctrination. The, most people don't like Trump. And y'all don't like him, but I'm gonna tell y'all the he ran it like a country. He actually tried to work for the consumers. There is actually a act that he put in place. It's called parents' choice. Look it up, guys. With parent choice, you know how that federal funding that they get for the school for your child. If yeah. you totally remove your child from their school, you can get the parent choice. Those funds come directly to you, or you can use them to send your kid to private school. Yes, yes, yes. It is called parent choice. Use it. Okay. They'll give you money for computers, funding, everything. But yes, just change their their ethnicity, their national, um, put their nationality on the record. Make sure to take your kids back from the state. You put that ad in the newspaper of when your children were born, what time they were born, what hospital they were born in. Put that in the newspaper. And then when you take that paperwork to school, attach the affidavit of publication so they know your kid can't be touched. Okay. okay. So, so every um, thing that I do for myself, I'm able to do on their behalf. Since, since, that is correct. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you. Outside of the E-Verify, because they're not 18 yet, um, you can definitely do the U.S. citizen search for them as their guardian. You can do that. Do not okay. address yourself as a parent. Look at what parents say. Pay rent. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Justin, as you're signing on behalf of their guardian, you can do that. Um, even with the common law status and all of that, if you are getting any like DHS assistance, I'm going to give y'all a tip. So I see people around here selling this damn food stamp piece of paper. Don't y'all dare take that paper, piece of paper selling, send it to nobody. You feel that DHS application out the same. Nobody has income because the definition of income is money from real estate and stock. Wages is considered tax class five, which stands for give. You fill out that DHS application normal. When they put income, you put zero. We know they system took that together. They're going to bring you a form back. On the back of that form, they're going to say, if you do not agree, get a hearing. In the hearing, show them the definition of income. You'll get the max amount of food stamps. You'll get the max amount of cash. And there's a $10,000 diversion program. You can go in there and you can get $10,000. It's called the diversion program. You do not have to be on DHS. Every... Um, person, you put it that way, has the right to get a one-time payment of $10,000 from your DHS office. It's called the diversion program. You can also get up to $4,000 a lifetime for car repairs. Don't let these people play y'all because guess what? They pulling it out your trust anyway. So go get it. But you will get the max amount of food stamps. You'll get the max amount of, um, of cash because that is a credit card. Girl, go get it. Need my help, let me know. But that's what you sent to the school, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, a couple of more, a couple of more. I'm gonna go to the next page because I've been taking it from the first page. Jamil. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I really, really, truly want to thank you for all what you're doing. Uh, I've been following and, and learning from you. A lot of information I got from you. Uh, it's really not a question. This is just a uh, thank of gratitude for you and what you're doing. Uh, I'm really thankful for all the information. Uh, I've already started this process, and uh, all you're doing is reiterating everything that you already have told me. And uh, this is this is all awesome awesome thing that you're doing and it's going to help plenty of people to liberate their families and and uh but it is putting in the work and i read a lot and i've been studying a lot and uh so i'm not i wouldn't jump off the cliff until um i know the understanding of what i'm doing and i do want to appreciate you taking the time to do it for us people absolutely it is it's my pleasure right like I said, I'm on a war on misinformation right now. And as you guys see, it's not as hard as people have made it if we just pay attention to their words and their documents. 
documents. And at this point, we are about to relive 1933. Ain't we tired of being slaves? See, they changed the, the slavery from whips and chains to mental slavery and then draining our energy with a 40 hour work week. Guys, the job that you are working, do you know they're paying you out your trust account? Right. Yeah, they're paying you your own money. You know, so I, I, I feel as though that I have a duty to make sure as many people that can get this information and will get it. And as you guys see, it, it'll make you feel like, oh, my God, it's too much. But then when you get a person like me that break it down to show you yeah. it's all in their forms, you ain't got to create no affidavits, send them the stuff they can everybody and we're going to be free and we're going to be free to go. So exactly. I, it is not a problem at all. Um, even I'm going to tell you all when because I've been doing this for so long that little things will try to stop. Like I told y'all in the beginning, my energy was bad because of stuff that was going on. I, it's by be people in here that ain't wasn't supposed to be in here because I just hit the button and say, just approve everybody. You know, because one side of me kept saying, oh, don't do it, do it. I said, I'm not doing that. I'm going to get these people what it is. Then the screen don't want to share. I said, okay, forget that too. I'm just going to give it to them in the ebook. Like they're not going to stop me from providing this information to you guys they shut my page down damn it just follow ignorance be gone and beautiful as really i'll tell you where the new page is at but i'm going to ultimately open up my own website on my own server so then we won't have to deal with these issues but you're more than welcome it's a pleasure i got one more question uh this yes. ebook e that you're going to send uh, a time frame about when we will get it. So, so, sometime tomorrow i need okay, to add a few you. because i wasn't planning on giving this out you know, but I don't like things being done in excellence and I could not share my screen. I don't like that. So if I got to give a little extra, I will. Um, I'm going to actually stay up tonight and I will put the additional things like the thing for Canada, make sure that everything is in there that you guys need. It will be sent in a drop box. All I will ask, guys, please do not give it up. If y'all was able to come on here and do what y'all need to do to save yourself, then they need to do the same thing you know because then i will continue to come on and show you guys different ways to free yourself like i know everybody want that do not pay do not collect bill status you know so yeah it's just by sometime tomorrow by the way i was a, i was that guy who told you about taking your own recorder into the court when reading out the ucc commission book see there, oh that was you hey hey <laughs> jamil yeah. where you jamil where you from your country yeah i'm from south Carolina. Okay. Oh, you ain't too far from me. I'm in North Carolina. It's for about another two weeks. Okay. If you come to that, towards this way, let me know. I do meet up with people. Yeah. I go to court for people if they close and all type of stuff, y'all. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. I do appreciate everybody. You are more than welcome. All right. Um. Okay, Earl. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Hello. Hello, how are you? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Um, I did my, um, I authenticated my birth certificate and sent it to um, the Puerto Rico and Treasury and all that other stuff. I was just wondering, um, is there a way that I got the bond, the, what is it called? Register bond, the $100 million bond. Is there anything I can do with that or how would that go? What, what you mean a $100 million bond, baby? The... The private, the register bond for it's on my page. Um, Auntie, so um, if you dig around enough, you know, with miss some of this information, you'll come to a point where you know you'll get a non-negotiable bond for set off, which is what he's about to show. Um, oh, that's people, what it is. Yeah, yeah, non-negotiable bond for set off, and then they tell you to that you got to send it to the treasury and such. Um, okay. and it's like they put like a hundred million dollars on there. Lord have mercy. They try to that use that to. Borrow against all their debts. Debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's oh, no. all that is. Please don't send them that. <laughs> okay. Because uh, okay. they, it's, the, you know, the reason why I asked that is because it's already been sent since, mm. um, mm. since uh, May or something like that, like May or April. And they so never said anything, have they? No, they never. I got, I don't think I got it my green return receipt. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's step that one uh, that you did wrong because that's that will be considered a um security so it should have been said register mail that's number one number two you can gift and this is something that i do in my private class because we are responsible for the public debt 
you can pay off for your portion of the public debt by sending the gift to the treasury. It needs to, one, be a negotiable bond. They need to be able to trade that. If they can't trade it, they can't make no money off of it. There mm -hmm. is also an additional form that needs to go with that so that they can apply it to your public debt, which will then at that point, have you guys ever heard trading with the enemy act? If you have not, please go look it up because we are enemy of the state because we're using dollar bills. So because we have nine, we actually have 10 birth certificates on the record with 10 different serial numbers, you will be in possession of one of them. That bond should have been negotiable. It also should have been for $9 billion and it should have been a international bill of exchange. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you look at the IRS publications, it says that if you send a promissory note, and cite now this is in the irs book it is on my page it says that if a customer sends a promissory note citing hr 192 send it directly to the criminal division for investigation and the attorney general of their state but then it says that if a customer sends you an international bill of exchange immediately route it to the head of the treasury so what did i tell you those international bill of exchanges is the best thing ever and that is how you can use that along with a treasury form for them to put it towards your public debt. okay thank you you're welcome all right um yahara that's pretty thank you um my question is well thank you guys so much for everything that you guys are doing tonight um and on your pages thank um, you. my question is very similar to don um i was born in the u.s virgin islands i'm from st croix um and i got my long form birth certificate from them but it didn't come authenticated um that's what i thought i ordered through vital records actually no with st croix i had to actually send them the form um, yes you did i, I had to write it out and then so, and then I was adopted in Maryland at the age of 16. So I have two birth certificates um, and I got both the long forms. Um, so with Dawn's question, you said she, she has double of everything now. So would that be the same? Hers will be the same way in which you'll do, you'll take it to your US embassy and have them authenticated for you. And just to take all whatever documents, both birth certificates, if you got double of everything, um, you're able to prove that both of them are you. So then you'll just go to your embassy and you'll get it authenticated on that level. Well, we don't have an embassy. We're part of the U.S. territory. So. Oh, yeah, you are part of the U.S. territory. Oh, you do have to send it back to them. To St. Croix. Yeah, you're going to have to send it. And there is an address. I forgot I had a, a, a private client that had to do that the address is on there you're going to have to send it to them um make sure you send it register mail when they have to send it back to you the return envelope also needs to be a register mail return envelope um i would do it via fedex or ups and not usps okay okay all right thank you you're welcome thank you um hold on Okay, Nancy. Can y'all hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? I'm great. How are you all? I'm great. Uh, thank you all for all that you're doing. Um, I have a question about um my husband. Okay, so um, can he? still do these processes even though he's in the midst of a court case a criminal court case absolutely can and honestly if you do the beginning part where he does the fact that he's not a u.s citizen and get that um that will actually stop this court case okay so the the first any of those will will stop it um being in the middle of a court case is just saying they're charging him with violating taxes if he has an attorney the attorney filed a form called 211 as a whistleblower um, if he does have an attorney, I will tell you to fire that attorney. Um, tell him to get a certified copy of his case and pay the taxes on his 10 cents. But being on probation or having a current court case does not stop any of these actions that actually help him because they only can charge a U.S. citizen. So getting that FOA, FOIA search back proving he's not a citizen and then doing his EIN number, letting them know it's about taxes because the tax court, they'll leave him alone very quickly. Okay, thank you so much. You're more than welcome.
All right. Um, Bernadette. Hey, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Um, my thing is, I, I'm a veteran uh, via, um, here, Ariana, and a federal employee with that has to use a CDL license. So all of that is in all in one. How would that affect me with the license? And if I wanted to do a claim for um, my military, stuff like that. Okay, it doesn't stop any social security benefits. It doesn't stop anything. Now, when it comes to your license, when you send off the documentation, you will make sure that you're only rescinding the part where they have you as a state employee. You will only use your CBLs when you're actually working. When you're in your private capacity, just use any other ID like your passport card. Only use the CDLs while you're driving or while you're in commerce. That's it. So I don't I don't have to apply for international. No, you don't. Not if you don't want to. No, you don't. But I will. If you're not going to do that, I will definitely tell you to get a passport card. The international make sure you, passport. No, no. The United States passport card. Oh, OK. If I was you, I would get the United States passport card. But make sure when you do the citizenship search, mm -hmm. the document that you will get back saying you're not a citizen, as long as you add that in in your application, you will be considered a non-citizen national. You will no longer be sitting there, be considered a U.S. citizen and you'll be fine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, um, Shanika. 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 Oh, okay, um, I, my question was, I had the issue, um, before with e-verify this is just in case somebody else has it um when trying to um correct the um status there um i was running into the issue where i could not pass the uh the self-test the self-check test or whatever and i've done it several times and i do know i do have my um credit froze that's why um and, but I've unfrozen it and still haven't been able to, to do it. Should I call? Which, which one have you, I, have you unfroze all of them? Yeah, because um, I, I have uh, Equifax Experian and um, TransUnion. Okay, so what you have to do is there okay. is a number that you can call. And what they're going to do is they're going to email you a document. So for anybody, please, when you go to do the e-verify that you will see that will be in the, um, the e-book, okay? When you go to do the e-verify, please make that you're sure that your credit reports are unlocked. You can lock them back if you choose to, okay? Um, if you're having that issue, there is a customer service number as well as a customer service email. They're going to send you a document so that you can just upload proof of your identity and then you'll be fine. That's it. All right. Pablo. Yes, hello. Hello, hello, hello Pablo. Oh, that right. beautiful Thank baby Thank you back so there. much. Thank you for so much all you do. And uh, <clears throat> I have one question, but I do have a couple things that uh, would help everybody out here. Um, I'm actually a uh, technology guy, so I've been doing crypto mining. And just one thing, going back to the XRP, uh, you can get that on uh, it's an app called on XRP to purchase it in the U S oh. and the only place you cannot purchase it from is New York and Hawaii. Um, one of the downfalls of uphold is they have a cold period where once you purchase it, they hold it for 65 days. So you're not oh. able to move it. You want to move your, any type of crypto that you invest in, move it immediately to cold storage. That okay. way you have less chance of it uh, being um, stolen from the exchange that you're on. <clears throat> and one more thing, uh, on a birth certificate, now every state's different. I was born in New York. I live and reside in Colorado now. I actually had to take my birth certificate and get it notarized before I went to the Secretary of State with it. So that might be something to make sure you check in to also too how your state does it. Because if you live in a different state, you have to get it notarized maybe. 
Um, as someone who also lives in Colorado, if you got a certified copy from the county, um, you can just take it right to the Secretary of State. You only need to get it notarized um, oh, okay. if it doesn't have the county seal on there. The clerk uh, signature, I mean, the registrar. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. All right. And then, you know, with New York, a lot of things are different because, you know, New York is the head of all states, guys. That's why the stock market is there. They'll try to make you think Delaware is the first state. That's why it says that it is not. It is New York. Why? That's why the New York neighborhoods are called boroughs. And in every other state, they're called subdivisions. Remember, we're under military too. So New York is the head of all states. So they stuff is done just a little bit differently. Um, I will tell you that if you do not live in the state of New York and you are trying to get your birth certificate, just take a trip, take a drive, say, hey, kids, we're about to go. Because I have a client now that ordered his birth certificate from New York um, about six months ago, and he is still waiting for it. So with some things, you may have to go get it. Um, if you do continue on this path and make it to where you can get out of minor status with your bank, you only need a certified copy of that birth certificate, but you're going to need it. Because that is your okay. proof that they request for to know that you are the age of majority. Okay. Uh, my question is, <clears throat> so... I don't know if you can see my beautiful daughter behind me on that picture. She is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so uh, two years ago, my ex was in the military and I was raising my daughter since birth and she cheated on me. I found out. So she worked at the DA's office, knew the magistrate. So I lost custody of my daughter. I haven't seen her in two years and I'm probably going to choke up, but I miss her. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, don't cry. So I want to know, like, is this process going to be able to help me get my daughter back, my custody, and my custody? Because I, I know as a father, I have guardianship, and the, the father always has a guardianship, and they're denying me due process, everything. And right now, the judge is actually, he's uh, acquiesced to the notices I sent, and now he's not even doing the final order, so I can't even appeal it. And I'm just sitting here. I've been waiting and waiting. I don't know what to do at this point, so I'm wondering – if this process is going to help me be able to do that. You about to make me cry. Y'all going to see a baby in a minute. Okay. I'm really <laughs> sensitive when it comes to kids. Um, I lost my kid's father when they were one and three. Unfortunately, uh, I was forced to be a single mother. And so my heart, when it comes to fathers, I do not feel like you guys get treated properly. Um, do me a favor. Send mm -hmm. an email to pathforfreedom at gmail.com. Okay. Um, sis. Set them up a counsel. I'm not, not charging them. No, nothing. I'm going to help you be able to see your daughter because that means a lot to me that you Thank want you. to see your daughter. These fathers are not getting the credit that they're supposed to have. And I have the tools to be able to help you to see that beautiful little face behind me. So just send, send a message. Um, sis, try to fit them in before I take that little break. Try to fit them in in there so that I can get them together. But yeah, just send a it's message. Gonna be after. The freedom. It's going to be after because your, your break is next week. Oh, yeah, it is next week. So it's going to be okay. next week. Okay, get him in as soon as possible. And um, just put on there, hey, I was on the live. I had a beautiful little baby in behind, and she'll know how to get you together. And I'll definitely help you with that, okay? Thank you so much. Absolutely. You are more than welcome. We help the dads. We love the dads. Oh, yeah, I help and the dads. We know that it's crazy women out here, so we understand. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know, FYI have, mothers. Uh... <clears throat> no, go sorry. ahead. Uh, you said, uh, I had one more question about the ID card. I did do that, and I wasn't sure how to rescind that. I want to get out of the honest stuff because I pretty much did all the documents, but I never submitted it to the Secretary of State or the county clerk, nothing like that. I have them okay. in my possession, but I do have the ID card. Okay. So within the ebook that I'm going to provide to you guys, it is going to have step-by-step -step how to do the recension of your driver's license and all of the documents that you will need to include in it and all of the particular uh, departments that you need to send it to. Now, because I don't have every state information, you guys will have to look up like your particular state, but you'll know what title you're looking for and what department. It'll be very easy for you to get the address, but it will be a literal step one, step two, add this paper, this paper, and where to send it to for you to be able to accomplish that. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate everything you're doing. You, and I would be willing to donate any time with you guys as far as any cryptocurrency investments, all that stuff. I've been doing this for a long time, so... 
I will volunteer for that. <laughs> Don't make my well, I, I love. I love to barter services. So I'm telling y'all, anybody that's on here that got a service or something that y'all offer and it's something that I can provide to y'all, I don't, I barter services, baby. Okay, I, I take guess. food stamps. I take all type of shit. They're, they're <laughs> saying, they never be no rock. Yeah. Yeah. If you I, make actually, I have a full mining rig running out my garage and I also I have clients that I run it for. So I can help set up that stuff, anything you need. I will. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna need you for my son because that that is my okay. 16 year old's thing and he does that. <laughs> so I would definitely, um, you know, be able to offer my assistance with this process. And you can Thank help you. my baby boy because helping my Absolutely. baby boy is, and we can definitely do that. So put that in an email. We'll talk on our one on one, and let's help you be able to see your baby. And we're gonna find some judges in the process. They're gonna have to step down because child support is unconstitutional, guys. Child support is unconstitutional because the legislative branch cannot make um, decisions for the judicial branch. That's why every case is really constitutional. Unconstitutional is a separation of powers. Um, so yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be love to be able to help you. And at the end of the day, you know, depending on how far you want to go with it, you can really take her from her and she got to get visitation. Don't play with me. I would love to because she's unstable. And, you know, I've raised my daughter since birth. And the whole time I'm raising my daughter, she's cheating. I mean, I found out and I almost went homeless. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to definitely help you in every which way I can. Uh, and for parents that are on child support or women that are on here, if you guys don't notice, they trade it with, oh, we'll give you all of these benefits if you get the dad, like you said, outside of the house. Let me tell y'all something. Under the Child and Maternal Act, Title IV, y'all hear me? They are getting a grant in the dad's name. Last year was $90,000 per kid. Mother. You were supposed to get a debit card with $7,045.42 on it every single month per kid that you have under the Title IV. That dad is paying child support. Your state is not giving it. It says that child support is not for the child. It is for the state. But the grant is becoming because of the dad. They also got a grant off of your marriage license where they're supposed to put you in pre-divorce counseling and things like that. So you don't have to deal with issues with your fidelity. And they got a grant off of that. So part of the paperwork that you're sending over to the state when you're asking them for the, the uh, county, it does cover all of that as well. And mothers, we're going to work on showing how to get that debit card because, or fathers, if you have custody of your child and these fathers should not be put in jail due to the fact that they are getting a grant from the federal government in the father's name. And last year it was $90,000. I will say it again, it was $90,000. So while we out here struggling, trying to take care of kids and things like that, the state was supposed to give you $7,042 every single month per kid that you have on the credit card. And that, but we're not saying fathers don't be able to take care of kids either. No, we definitely not saying that. So I don't want anybody to think that. But what I'm saying is right. that that frustration that you're taking out on your dad, on that um, kid's father, and you're getting any type of state assistance, please know that the father has already paid for it. The state took the money to do whatever they want with it. And now that's why the child support sweep is done at a certain time every year because of June of every year. They have to do an accounting to the federal government to what they did with the money. And that's why they come to the rest of y'all. Are right, we going to take a couple of questions? And that's Thanks it. again. You're more than welcome. All, All right. right. Troy? Oh, yes. <laughs> How's everything? I appreciate you so very much. I'm going to be rather quick. Um, I've done a lot of different paperwork. I've studied with a lot of different people, and I've probably done some things right, some things wrong. I know that I have a five-star passport. I don't know exactly what that means, but Nothing. Other... okay, <laughs> because I know other people, when we went and did it, one got a four star, one got a three star. They sent me a five star. It means nothing. Okay. So um, I, I did receive a letter from the IRS stating that my account has been resolved. Um, the way I did my SS5 form slightly different because what I did with mine um, and I'm going to redo it. I'm just letting you know what I did with mine. Um, I put the um, the all caps name as being the United States citizen and myself as being the beneficiary. So I don't know what that means, but uh, that's what I initially did with mine. So I had done all of those different forms and stuff and I faxed stuff over and did this, did that. My question really is, 
when it came to the E-Verify, because I was trying to do it while we were on, is it the My E-Verify or the E-Verify? Because there are two different systems, and I realized it after I started. It is the My E-Verify. And then the first thing you want to do is to set up an account. I did that. After you set up the account, you're going to go to My Information. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to go to Update My Information. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to come to a part that asks for your citizenship status. You're right. going to select non-citizen national of the United I did, States. I did that. Then there's going to be a spot that says lock your SSN. You're going to lock your social security number. Okay. On that same page, when you get done, if you look down at the bottom in the footer, you will see where it says FOIA. If you click that, it's going to automatically take you to put in your request of your citizenship status. And from there, you'll put in the information that we spoke about that will also be within the ebook itself. And then, um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Now, it's funny because I did do, um, I did a, um, I know I, put, I purchased a $43,000 car and I was able to do a tax exempt. So I'm not sure. I have some things that worked for me, some things that didn't. I'm not. So I'm just going to do everything that you shared. Yeah, so what it is, is that a lot of the processes that people use to do, depending on how they filled out the paperwork, would work. But what could work for you today may not work for the next person tomorrow. So ultimately, when you're using their words, it cannot not work. Okay. And because that's what they're doing once when a person gets. Like I said, with the W-4 sandwich, everybody was doing it at the beginning of this year and we were getting paid out within like 13, 14 days, like the money was coming. Now that so many people are doing it, they're saying it's frivolous filing. So because so many people is on this freedom movement, they're going to start rejecting things that normally was accepted, like with what you were doing. A lot of my things I did, you know, beforehand and they're still into play. But I know that because of how they're trying to change the system and the things they're trying to do, they're going to start avoiding some of that because they're going to be like, it's not our policy. So when you do it according to their policy and according to their documents, they cannot stop. It. Point nope. blank and period. Now I noticed you were right. talking about a whole bunch of stuff. With we got to go to the next person. No, go ahead. Uh, let me say what you guys say. I'm okay. With, with the stimulus thing, um, I didn't receive stimulus money because I refused to apply for it because I didn't want to get locked back in their system. <laughs> but I heard you mention about a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could have gotten that stimulus money because I didn't take any of it. I was like, I'm going to leave y'all alone. You leave me alone because I, I haven't done you tax. You absolutely could have. I have not. Okay. So I don't get any taxes taken out. I have not had any taxes taken out in about 15 years. Okay. I do not pay taxes. But do I get a tax return every year? I want the money out of my trust in any way you're going to give it to me. Yes, I do file my taxes every year because those are our credits that belong to us. Not just that, all of these consumer contracts and things that we are signing and the 1099C that they are sending, that is considered taxable income. Well, it's, it's considered income. But if you fill out the proper form, you're not taxed on it. That is also my way of making sure that well, not now, but then that the companies was held liable for the fact that they had a consumer contract because I re actually reported it. But your taxes is nothing but credits. So if you have a house, you have kids, you have some, those are credits that belong to you. It does not suck you back into their system. When you start agreeing to pay them as you're an employee, then it does. I want to be one of your students. I do. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. You have an incredible evening on purpose. And I'll, I'll, um, TikTok you to figure out how to become a student. Yes, I put the email inside of the chat box. Appreciate there it. it. Thank you, you so very much. You are more than welcome. Who next, Cassandra? Um, I don't see her. She just went away. She literally was just up here. I was about to click on it. Okay, just find me somewhere. Oh, here she goes. I'm Cassandra. Hello, how y'all doing? Great. Uh, I, I do apologize if you hear yourself. My phone speaker is crappy, so I do have you on my TV in order for me to hear you. Okay. Um, I had four of us up here as well. They unmuted me, so I'll, I'll wait until she's done. What? I didn't hear her. 
It's okay. She said that you made a mistake. I unmuted her because you had called her. I thought I called her. She'll wait till we're done. I got her. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You um, go ahead, Cassandra. So uh, I have a, I've been trying to help my brother out when it comes down to his house because they're trying to foreclose it. Um, but they keep sending his application from one bank to another. They, they keep selling the debt from one person to another. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's the first thing I should do to help him out. Mm, that's a nice little process because it's a mortgage. You have to send it. You have to send an email to set up a console for that one. Um, because they've sold that mortgage more than that. They probably sold it, depending on how long he had it, about 10,000 times right now, and they don't have a copy of it. The first thing that I would absolutely positively tell you to do is he need to put a lien on it. He also needs to do an acceptance of his deed, um, but it would be more that I would have to discuss than I could on this live. So you can set up a, um, a console and I can walk you through the steps. When I do a console, guys, I literally give you the entire steps that you need, depending on what you're asking for, as well as the remedy to be able to do it. So, but yeah, start with a link, file a UCC um, one on it. Okay. And so, um, tell him to do a quick claim deed and sell the house to his trust for a valuable consideration of $10. Put the house up under the trust and put a lien on it. But yeah, you can send an email to get full um, information on that. Okay, that'll work. Um, I have one other question. I had did the My E Verify when uh, Ignorance Be Gone had posted it. And then um, as far as the FOIA request, I wanted to confirm because it said something about upload documents Do, did i have to upload anything or did no. i just put a request out to document mm -hmm. status no the only time you have okay. to upload anything to them is if you are contesting the document that they sent you back so let's just say you get it back you're not a u.s citizen and you want to prove that you are then you will send them the proper documentary evidence on that but no you didn't have to upload them anything okay is it oh. Thank you. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that'll be. I'm sorry. Yanni Osborne. Hey. Okay, so I did have a question. Like, um, I had been seeing like different stuff on TikTok, but I'm just trying to confirm. So I think it was like on the passport where they were saying you have to select a different type of country, like a mm -hmm. nine. So you don't have to do none of that. No, ma'am, you're going to fill it out the same and you're going to do exactly what they ask for on the Department of State website. They say if you want to be classified as a non-citizen national, provide us with acceptable documentary evidence and your evidence is going to be that um, United States FOIA search. That's going to be the only thing that you need to do for that, as well as change to the SS5 form as we discussed in here. But no, nope, nothing else done. Uh, I don't know what these people are <laughs> telling y'all, but no, you don't have to do anything else. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Ryan. We can't hear you. Okay, we're going to come back to you. Diamond. Hello, how are you guys today? Absolutely wonderful. Hey, Nail Tech, what state you in? Um, my mom, Miss Levy. Um, but I have a question. So I am actually filing for disability because I have Tourette syndrome, and I also have something going on with my brain where I have seizures daily. Mm -hmm. And I'm filing for disability. What do I do in this process? Because I am in the system, and I don't know how hard I am in because I have filed for disability so what let can me I tell do? you I'm gonna really be honest with you once you fill out that SS5 form in the proper status that disability gonna go through so quick girl <laughs> so <laughs> let me tell y'all why though so we're going to use what's going on with the immigrants that's coming over here right so mm -hmm. I was at the doctor's office doing the checkup and I got pissed right so they couldn't speak no English. They came over. They're getting $2,000 a month. They're getting free housing. They're getting their hotels paid for for a year. Two thousand. Guess why? Because they are in a system that's foreign. They don't have to go through none of that. So when you update that SS5 form, watch how fast. You ain't going to have to go to no doctor's appointment. They're going to just send it to you and say, hey, you've been approved. And they're going to give you the max amount. So there it is. 
You don't okay. have to, you're not, it's not going to stop nothing. It's actually going to make it better for you because as a U.S. citizen, they think they treat us like crap, right? But we Absolutely. come on, we, uh, uh, but as soon as you get in the proper status, because we're all foreign to the United States. So as soon as you get in that proper status, it's like, they're going to be throwing gold at you. Like you get this and you can get this and you can get that, you know? And people don't realize that when you get up under that foreign status, the way they're giving out that $2,000 a month for them, you know y'all can go get that right because you are considered foreign to the United States. We got to start taking back what's ours. I mean, exactly. you know, you'll be fine. And will this raise the amount that I can get for my disability and food and, stamp? And yeah, well, I told you how to do the food stamp thing. So for the food stamps, when they ask for income, of course, they're going to send you the amount about they find your income in the system. You know how with every last one of those forms, to say if you don't agree with the decision, ask for a hearing. Mm -hmm. Ask for the hearing. In the hearing, you flat out tell them, I don't have any income according to the definition, the lawful definition. So what that'll do is for your family size, they will give you the max amount for your family size in food and cash. And if I was you, I will make them backdate it all the way back to the first time you ever got it and they will do it. You have to do it during the hearing though because that's a private process. And your hearing will be considered private. Okay, well, I'm gonna definitely look at this replay because this is a lot of information. I gotta <laughs> <laughs> it kind of overwhelmed me, but thank you so much. And you, you are more than welcome. welcome. And, he always um, does. Thank you for blessing that father, and you end up getting a blessing in return that made me so happy and just made you have a, a magnitude of peace, shalom, and favor of the most high. Okay. Thank you, thank All you, thank you. I accept, too. I accept that. every bit of that. that. <laughs> yes, I accept every bit of that. Thank you so much. Let me know how that goes after you get everything done, how fast they move for you under um, that disability. I actually had a patient follow me 12 years ago. Oh, well, no, longer than that. My daughter's 18. And I, they don't even know how I'm walking because I'm missing some discs, ain't got no discs. You know, thank God that. You know, I got when people go by from Dr. Miami, I was born with one. So it's holding my spine up. Y'all caught that. You know what I'm saying? So it's actually holding my back up. Um, but when I was able to do mine and with me having stuff right, I had to go see no doctor and they did it. My kids get it. Let me tell y'all something. I don't care how much my car keep going. If it belongs to me, I'm going to get it. I'm going to collect the bag from everybody plus some. Okay, go get the bag. Okay, well, next, thank baby. you so much. You're, You're welcome, welcome love. Erica. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much. Okay, so I am, um, I know you said initially that all the things that we're doing um, have us employed or something and we're trying to get free, but I'm literally, literally employed with the state. So can I still do all these things and keep, you know, still have my job? Would that affect my job at all? So your employment with the state is the public side, right? What you're doing is the private side of the books that they don't let you see. It's not going to hinder anything that you're doing on that wise of it. Okay. Okay. I will never put a person in the position. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all go out here trying to fill out them W-8 BN, send them to your job. Yeah, you're going to get fired. Don't do that. Just use the regular voluntary W-4 form and um, in box four, just write exam. To make sure you're not penalized, just make sure you fill out that, refill that form out by fe September, February, excuse me, 17th of every year, and then you won't be penalized for it. But that's it. No, nope, you'll be okay. Okay, well, they have that little rule with the exempt saying you had to have been exempt the year before Mm -mm. after something like that right the rule says that you have do you have any tax liability for this year no because we don't never have tax liability will you have any tax liability for the next year no if you answer no to those questions is exempt that's why they took that off of the form because it was line number seven real real small but now you're just going to write it in line number four write the word exempt on your federal forms get the state forms and do exactly the same thing now when you fill out that ss5 form and you put yourself on foreign status. Remember the young man, the, the gentleman who just spoke saying he got his form back from the IRS saying that his IRS tax things is good. Once you correct yourself with that SS5, you all are going to get that letter saying that you are now tax exempt and then you ain't got to worry about no taxes. And if you do it right, there is a 
form that you can fill out to get back all the taxes that you ever gave them plus interest. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. It's my pleasure. All right. Um, e. Marie. Where are you saying all these hands at? Yes, sir. Uh, hello. Hello. Thank you all for um, having this. And I do appreciate you. Um, my question is, I'm married. And I don't know if I should, do I put my maiden name on this information? Or do I put my married name on this information? You'll, you'll put the name that's on your birth certificate. OK. And so you, just remember that, won't, that it, it won't change anything. No, it won't change anything. Okay. Um, it's not going to change anything. Just have to remember that your trust is in the name of you, not your marriage. Okay. Now, that marriage license that you got just opened up another contract. And if you look under the Title IV, they actually received the grant for pre-divorce counseling and some other things that they're supposed to be giving you guys. So when you get yourself right on that, you can actually rescind that marriage license so that the they can get out of your business, put yourself under common law marriage, and put the ad in the newspaper, get the um, affidavit of publication. And at the point that you do that, you are still now legally married, but you don't have the state telling you what to do and when you can get divorced and how much money they can take from you. Great. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. I'm going to notice. Hold on, before you do that, if y'all can notice, I am getting a series of all di different type of questions. Y'all don't hear me saying, um, hold on, wait a minute. This comes with 10 years, guys. It's in me. Like, I've been studying and reading this for so long that it's just there. So that's how I'm able to answer you guys' this question like that because I have read every entity, corporation, all of their stuff. So I just wanted to point that out. But come on, we'll do the last few more because I'm getting tired now. Yeah, we're going to take only five more. That's it. After that, only five more. So this is Andre and we get four more to go. I just wanted to say, you know, uh, thank you once again for doing what you was doing. The information that you gave us is so invaluable to what we paid. You could have got so much more. <laughs> but um, People tell me that I, all the time. Ah, oh, man. It's like I'm sitting here like in amazement. And uh, I had to, you know, uh, thank your team to uh, Ignorance Be Gone. He opened me up uh, months ago to some questions that he posted on TikTok and just got me going down a rabbit hole. And I've just been like going down ever since. And, I, you know, I follow a lot of people putting out a lot of information, but nothing like y'all, nothing like y'all, because y'all have receipts for everything. So I just want to say I really, really appreciate that. My question is, uh, I have a son that's just about to get ready to get his driver's license. Should I allow that to happen first or should I try to go through the process before he even gets his license, you know, to, to get him under a certain status? Well, um, my daughter is a driver. She just turned 18. Her car is not registered. She's never had a state ID or a state license. And um, she has the international driver's ID. I will do that for them. Okay. You can do that for him. Um, my daughter actually was um, allegedly doing 90 <laughs> in the 60s. Trust me, she was doing it. She my kid. So I know she was doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, she called me and said, hey, the troopers are stopping me. Of course, it's her first time. She's only 18. She's a pretty little girl. So she like, oh, shit, the police is stopping me. Right. So she called me on FaceTime. I said, don't worry about it. The police officer came to the car, asked her for her ID. She gave him her international ID. And now make sure when you get it, you got to keep the car and the booklet together. He asked her, do you have a state ID? She said, no. He went back to the car and did something that came back. His exact words to her was this. Um, I have a Mercedes Benz as well, and I know that they move fast. I need you to slow down. I'll say Mrs. W is what he called her. I need you to slow down and you have a good day. Wow. Due to the fact that the car was not registered, there was no contract. He right. had no ability. Due to the fact that she's never had a driver's license, all she can get was, ma'am, have a good day. And I know she my kid. Damn well, she was doing 90 and SC300, okay? <laughs> I know she was, but it was nothing they can do because there was no contract that existed. So hopefully that story right there will give you your answer on what to do for your son. Yes, ma'am. I really appreciate it. That was my yeah. only question. Thanks again. You're welcome now. If you want to make sure that he doesn't, because... 
you know, they after our babies. So whatever car you're going to get him, you make sure that you do not register that, that car. If you have to register it, you're going to register it up under a trust. Anything up under a trust, they can't touch. Okay? If you need some guidance on that, just shoot an email and I'll let you know how to properly do that. But put your car up under a trust and they can't do anything with you. Okay? I, I sure will. I have I have three cars, actually. And, um, you know, I, I figured once I go through the process, I would, you know, rescind all the, you know, information, all the um stuff i have on them you know what i mean once i get are everything they, set up. are they fully paid for mm, no no yeah i would go for that international bill of exchange act and i would pull my contract and i would find out who the trustee is you know what i'm saying under sec sec dot report which is a hey uh, i'm gonna slow this down because i see some people right so <laughs> yeah. if it was me with a car note <laughs> I will go under SEC, S as in Sam, E as in Edward, C as in Cat, dot report. And I will put that company finance name in. And I will go look for their 8K as in Kite or their 10K as in Kite form. And I will find out who their trustee is. You scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's going to give you the name of the bank and the representative. And, you know, I will create a nice little international bill of exchange on bond paper, you know, and um, yeah, I will send it to them. And if you want to line a credit to them like I do with Mercedes Benz, I will make it a little bit higher than what I owe them and tell them to open me up a line of credits. I go get me a damn brand new car anytime I want to. You know, that's just me, but you ain't here for me, but you heard from me. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're welcome. And it does Thanks. work. Oops, sorry. So if you're smart, get a line of credit. All right. Mark, we have next. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So the question, when you were talking about uh, setting up the LLC, mm -hmm. you said something about going back 25 years. Yes, you can go back but that 25 years. It might have been with the bank. It okay, might have so been with you, the When you set the LLC up, even... When you set the LLC up, you you have them backdate that twenty five years from whatever date yes, you, it is, right? Yes, you can. Okay, and and that's for what purpose? What's that going to What's that going to benefit? That that's going to cover you for any of the consumer contracts or anything that you've done in banking, because your your reason is for banking. Anything that you've done in banking within that time. Now, of course, if you're only 25 you'll go back to the age of 18 but if you are you know over the 40 mark like i am then you'll go back right. 25 years but because you're doing it for banking services because i hopefully the ultimate goal is to get your unlimited access at the bank so that's what it'll yeah be for. yeah I, we've talked to i've talked to you about this Did uh, you? through tiktok oh, okay. well yeah trying to access the trust yeah yeah, yeah. the only way to that's, access that's the trust is through the bank because <laughs> right yeah i understand that now to a, to a degree i still have a lot of questions about it but i understand it absolutely so, set up a console or back. come to my private class and i'll show you either one yeah absolutely will do i appreciate it thank you thank it's you. my pleasure um hold on we am going to the next page because we got people on the next page i've been answering questions off the first page that's not fair roya Hi, thank you. I feel like I won the prizes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. You the next contestant yeah. on the path to freedom. <laughs> yes, I appreciate it. Okay, so my situation is a little peculiar. So um, authenticating my, um, my birth certificate is not possible. Uh, wow. Because I come from Afghanistan. And... Wow. So everything's been blown out because of the Russian invasion in the 70s. Right. So it's completely not possible. Do you yeah. have a copy of your birth certificate? No, my parents had to flee the country. Oh, okay. yeah. What do you have for over here? Any nationalization papers? What do you have for here? Uh, citizenship. Hey, that's all you need. That oh. document that you're going to get, that's all you need. Do okay. me a favor. Set up a, a console. Okay. Just give her a console. You don't have to pay me. Give her a call. The email address that of the 
is inside of the chat. Yeah, so. I'm a little back booked okay. up, but we'll get you fitting in somewhere because yours is absolutely different. But you got so much you can get, especially being from Afghanistan, baby. So yeah, okay. set up a set up a council, and I'll help you with that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate. You're more it. than welcome. And thank you for everything. It's my pleasure. More. Thank you. Luis Perez. Lewis. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you? Hello, Lewis. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, just a lot of information. Is, uh, a lot mind blowing over here. Um, and thank you very much for uh for all your help, really. Um <clears throat> uh my question is towards the uh let me bring it up over here. Uh the SF-81, uh, 181. Okay. Um, you said uh, American Indian and white, of course. Um, under question one, I was born in Puerto Rico. So that question one, I'm going to have to put yes, I'm assuming, correct? That is correct. Okay. But that's a good thing, though, because all of our, uh, the main part of our trust is held in Puerto Rico. Um, our head versus ticket visits in Puerto Rico. So yeah, oh, definitely so check for the right track. <laughs> okay. Yes, definitely check for whatever on that form that applies to you. You want to check it, but you want to also make sure that you check the everything that applies to you, and not be confused by uh, Black African American. It's all about looking at their definition of the word, and you ask yourself, "Am I any of that?" And then you will classify yourself with that as well. And always remember when you are considering about the American Indian land, remember all of this land was American Indian. So I don't care what color you are, you have to have some lineages within the nationality of American Indian. Despite some of you know us copper color people try to say it's just us, it's not unfortunately, um, not unfortunately, but it's not just us. It is anybody that is a part of this land because all of this land is Indian. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're more than welcome. All right. Last one. Azra. Ezra. I hope I say her name right. His name right. Ezra. Ezra. Sorry. Yeah. I want to talk about the elephant in the room. These school motherfucking loans. How do we deal with that? So what you're trying to do with it? You're just trying to get it off the credit get, report? Yeah. How, how, how we get out of that contract? So you want out the contract or you just want it off your credit report? Both. Are you going to do both? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so anybody that's on this live that got credit, that got student loans on your credit report, I literally just posted it. The Family Educational Act of 1974. That act, your school promised not to give any of your information to nobody. That includes the credit reporting agencies. So if you make a CFPB complaint, use that Family Educational Privacy Act of 1974, use the regular Privacy Act of 1974, and then do an opt-out. Most people don't know under 15 USC, I believe it's 6905 or 6509 is one of the two. I'm a little sleepy now. Um, you can opt out of anything that is reporting to your credit report. Whoever is reporting, they're supposed to send you a documentation 30 days before they're reported every single month, giving you the option to opt out. The quickest way to do it is through the CFPB. Now, to get out of the physical contract because they already discharged it, you're going to want to pull your loan paperwork. If you do not have it, call them. They will send it to you. There is going to be a, a portion on there that is going to be in 10-point bold print that is going to say any holder of this consumer credit contract, the person can assert their rights at any time. To find that particular law, because it is a law, you will find that at 16, C as in Cat, F as in Frank, R as in Robert, 433.1, 433.2, 433.3, 433 433.1 is going to give you the definition so you'll know how to address who you are as the consumer, and that was actually a money purchase loan that you got and not a educational loan, as they're trying to say. Um, 
433.2 is going to have that exact statement that you're going to see on any of your contracts or this car contract, school contract, that you are able to assert your rights at any time. You're going to use that. 433.3 tells you who is exempt. So as long as that credit consumer application was done anytime after 1977, they all apply. Y'all know how you get these companies say that don't apply to us. Pull out 16 CFR 433.3 on their ass and there you go. And that's how you reset that. And another thing, if y'all want to um, know more, me and um, Pastor Freedom, we do have a credit class that is in the bio and my link. We did this class on August 3rd. Um, I am, we are going to have another one coming up in the next couple of weeks, which is going actually more extensive, but you might want to go ahead and get that replay to start off. Yeah. So, yeah. And I don't do credit any longer, but beautiful as what does, it's just a headache. I'll just say opt out of everything. But most people say you, you don't need your credit report. Let me tell y'all something. You got to live in the public while living in the private. You want to get that school where it is so you can go down and sit with these people because how you going to go in there talk about I don't owe no down payment. Them people not going to listen to you. Go in there and get that stuff on that credit because anything that you do on your credit, you know it's the responsibility of the United States under 18 U.S.C. 8. Then turn around and descend it because possessions is nine attempts of the law. You already got the product and it'll be easier for you to keep the product and keep it for free that way. So make sure that your credit is right because this new social credit score system they about to have with all these cameras everywhere. You jaywalk, they gonna knock off some points and take off your little thousand dollars they're trying to get. Also, yeah. I'd like to add that um, when you're looking at that U.S. code, it is gonna refer you to 16 CFR Code of Federal Regulations 313 for privacy on consumer finance, and it specifically tells you under um, 16 CFR 313.1 the notice is required for opt-out. And, and, and one of them specifically tells you that there's four things they need to do. They need to provide you a clear, conspicuous notice of your right to opt-out. There you they go. They need to send it to you with 30 days. They need to give you ample time in order to respond or tell them that you don't want them to report it, or you just choose not to opt-out because as she said earlier, silence is acquiescence, which means acceptance, okay? So just refer to that as well, 16 CFR 313, and I did post a video on that on my page as well. Perfect. Right and up. and okay. always remember that the CFRs are stronger than the USC's United States code is only a code to back up the law. What is the law? The one that says CFR because it is coded in the federal registrar. They have a lot of USC's that are out. For example, the possession law. You will find a USC that's talking about possession. But possession was repealed in 1984. West law posts a lot of things that they know are not accurate law any longer. Um, I learned that out when I went to the Library of Congress and spent the weekend there until they kicked me out, the, getting information to extend my learning um, and grabbing the physical acts of it. So that's how y'all do it. If y'all got any more, like she said, beautiful as well, has a link in her bio. She literally walked y'all through the CFPB process and everything. Um, that class was August 3rd. On August 4th, a young lady used those same tips via the CFPB. She got her student loans, an auto repo, and a medical bill removed off her credit report within eight hours. Eight hours. As well as Kayla. As well as Kayla. Now, yeah. to use that to collect the bag, because y'all know I'm all about the bags, y'all. So to collect that bag, if, say, you got a copy of your credit report, the student loan is on there, then you get a hit back that they removed it. The fact that it was on there and it was removed is considered a proof of claim. Attach you an invoice to it, find out who is over that department at the different credit bureaus sending the bill. I promise you they'll send you a check. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Um, I look forward to having a consultation at some point. Absolutely. This will be my pleasure. All right, you guys. Well, um, let's see. Yeah, what time is it? We've been on here like. Yep, that's it. That's it. Oh, hours. Yep. So make yes. sure y'all, if y'all can't find that um, link, it's in beautiful Azra bio and TikTok and as well as Instagram. Um, you get that link if you're trying to get your credit fixed. And sister, you got anything else to say? Yes. First of all, thank you guys so much for choosing Path to Freedom. Um, as you guys see, sometimes when I'm trying to get the truth out, the different platforms give me an issue or whatever. But you guys see, I do not stop. I don't know how to stop. Um, I'm not just going to be stopped, point blank, period. Um, so thank you guys so much. I hope that you guys see that. 
this process is not as hard as people are trying to believe that it is. And as long as you read and overread, they give us all of the answers. Um, I am considering running like some type of series for you guys to get you to where you guys need to have a, a solid foundation. If that's something that you guys want, you know, just send us the email and say, hey, we would love to do that. This is my teaching style. I try to make sure that you guys have a full understanding. I try to answer everybody's questions. There's 200 to some people on here, so I apologize if I couldn't get to them. Or, uh, um, because if not, we'll be here all night. I will make sure that the ebook is sent to you guys no later than tomorrow afternoon. Please give us until tomorrow afternoon because I do need to ask. We might, we might need to wait because we got another. Got mm -hmm. I got it. Happen. I'm going no, I'm to stay up tonight and I'm going to get it. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. They have to have this. Like, they have to have this. So if I got to sacrifice my sleep a little bit and drop pop me a no dose for them to get it, they are going to get it. Um, Because I I like to do everything in excellence and I feel some type of way I shouldn't share my screen. So, you know, it is what it is. I'll be able to make sure that you guys have that. As long as you follow the steps in there, you guys will be okay. And more importantly, pull the power out that you have. We are the key players in a game that we didn't know we were playing. Once you realize that you have all of the power, it's going to be very easy. Ask your creator to give you discernment on who you need to be listening to. Don't let everything go in your spirit. More importantly, fact check everything. More importantly, manifest what it is that you want because it does work. I manifest my entire life before I go in here messing with these banks or whatever, you know, I, I put out what it is that I expected to receive, but I also made sure that I put in the work and I had the foundation to do it. So I do appreciate every last one of you guys. Once again, please give us until this afternoon and for further reference, if we do any other lies and things I need for you guys to be on time. I need for y'all to get those registrations in and things like that because it does make it harder on our side trying to fight against the computer system that's trying to do one thing and we're trying to do something else. It just didn't work. Um, but I do appreciate every last one of you guys. Hopefully you got a greater understanding of the basics and this is how you are supposed to start on this journey. I'll make sure you guys get the ebook out. Keep following me. If they take my page, go to either Ignorance Be Gone page or Beautiful Azure. And the email is going to always be path to freedom at gmail.com. Follow me on Breakout. Yeah, you got to find me. I'm not going nowhere. Um, my page has a lot, if not all of the answers on there. Just take the time to read them. But besides that, I'm a little tired now. It's been like five hours we've been on. And um, I appreciate every last one of you all and look forward to helping you all on your path to freedom. And thank you. To my beautiful directors, um, Caleb, thank you so much. Dear mm -hmm. for Asper, thank you so much. I know I could not do this without you guys, and I couldn't. They are a wonderful team to have. Please, at all times, respect us. Respect what we're trying to do. It's not as easy as you guys think that it is. So, But one thing about us, if we say we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Please just give us the time to do it. And besides that, you guys enjoy your Saturday. I will see you on the talk y'all better go hit that main path to freedom 2022 page if you gotta go through a snapshot because they about to take it oh yeah they can I just, they about to take it. can i just add one thing to that um on the chance that you do not get the ebook exactly in the afternoon tomorrow because auntie got busy please do not blow up the line you will receive the ebook you will receive the ebook we said we we're gonna get it to you it will be to you i i know how it goes please do not blow up the line and it will be coming in a Google Dropbox. Um, I have to do that for the protection of my intellectual property because unfortunately everybody is not upstanding people and that's just what it is and they'll see that I'm the type of person that I like to lean you to. But it will come in a Google Dropbox. Be on the lookout for it. Um, please restrain for calling that 214 number. It's not really supposed to be for incoming calls. I do know it was on the end of the receipt and you guys need answers. We do appreciate that. Um, but it's, it's only the three of us. That's it. It's me, Caleb, and beautiful Azra, and we are doing the best that we can to accommodate everyone. Um, once again, certain things with the bank I cannot teach publicly because it's a private process. A lot of things that I can teach publicly, I will. If you guys would like me to host a another class on how to get your bills and do not pay, do not delete status, just let me know. Because I ain't going to offer none that y'all don't want. If y'all want it, I'll do it. If y'all don't, y'all don't. It's up to y'all. And besides that, you guys enjoy your night. And remember, they put all of the answers on your bills in your, 
in your contracts, read them things, break them things down. And if I was y'all, I would go pull that international bill of exchange law because baby, that's y'all winner right there. And besides that, you guys have a very wonderful night.